shit. But fuck shit, kunais. But you look at, we can talk about this on podcast. This is good podcast shit here. <laughs> I'm rolling. Not his family stuff, but everything else. <laughs> Every time, I, every time I have this on, my wife's like, take me there. Dude, that's, that's computer animated. I'm assuming if it's real, it's, Cal- it's California, Northern California. I bet it's not even real. I don't know. That is on my bucket list. Pacific Coast oh, Highway yeah. 1. My, my Three, brother, my Three, two. One. Boom, and welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Lucky Duck. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world-famous Andy Shaver. So bad pieces of pussy. Is that what we were talking about earlier? <laughs> we were. <laughs> There's no such thing. Bad pe- Worst pieces are still pretty damn good. Yep. yep. A buddy um, of mine that's older that's been on here a couple of times, he said his first wife was the worst he ever had. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty funny to listen to a 70-year-old man talk about that. So they had bad shit back in the 60s. <laughs> he did. He said, God. Damn, she couldn't put out to save her life. Yeah. Well, why'd you marry her? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Wade, you're a single man. Have you ever had bad pussy? Uh, a time or two. <laughs> a time or two. Bad or just something you regret? As old Les Bowman says, the worst at the time still better than none at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Very true. Have you ever done the walk of shame? Uh, Maybe a time or two down at UT. You did? You walked out of there and think, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Kinda. Have you ever been the walk of shame? That's what you don't want to be. Like where, where the girl's walking out. She's like, oh, I'm Fuck. sure there's a few of them that weren't too impressed. <laughs> hey, do you care? We, we've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> but do you care? No, it's, no, hell no. It, it is what it is. What's bad is if you don't brag about some girl, you know she's not a looker. <laughs> it's like your buddies, and she comes up and talks to you, and you're like, they're like, how do you know her? Well, mm-hmm. well, there's it one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a buddy of mine. He's did the ugly girl come up to him. I'd be like, yo, bragger. You didn't brag about her. <laughs> but the yeah. bad thing is, is when you're the one that nobody's bragging about, and the girl's embarrassed that she did that. Well, that's me. That's me. I ain't afraid to admit it. <laughs> was you was you a frat daddy at Texas at UT? Uh, yes, sir. I was. Oh yeah. I was. I'm jealous of you. Well, I mean, but we we sat on the tailgate before I went down to Austin at Bucky's house, and he goes, "I'm just scared to death. Austin's gonna change you." And I said, "Bucky, <laughs> I was. I mean, he's like, 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 gonna get an ass tattoo and come back and do an <laughs> anal sex? No, not even. Not not that bad. <laughs> no, I just, I just thought it would." He'd move to Dallas and be a liberal. Rub, yeah, pretty much. No, he was he was definitely concerned and but I was I was in a fraternity down there and met a lot of good guys and it, it was a lot of city guys. I was really the only small town guy in Austin, Texas, and uh, they were all good guys except for Cody. <laughs> oh, Cody Cruz, but. Uh, <laughs> What's the deal Why with Cody he Cruz? No, oh, he'd get drunk. He's a funny little he'd shit. get he'd get drunk late at night and call Bucky and What are you doing, Bucky? Now they they had several cussing matches. But. How old were you at the time? Like, do you have a job? Like, were you getting up the next day? Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. Tony had yeah. a buddy like that. Tony, they just started the business and Tony was doing breakfast and Friday, Saturday night. This guy was getting back from the bar at one thirty two. This wasn't just a guy. This was Tony's best friend's <laughs> yeah. chance. What are you doing, Tony? Husband, you getting ready to make that sausage? And Tony's like, all right, motherfucker. Yeah, so, I, got, I got a job to do in the yeah. morning. Wednesday morning. He's, it, you know, he calls four him. four o'clock. Exactly. Yeah. After two times, Chance said, uh, I won't call We're you good. no more on yeah. Friday. I'll, call, I'll call the truce. Yeah. yeah. Chance is the one that um, I told my mom. I called my mom not long ago, and I was like, well, I guess Tony told you, huh? Jeff, what's wrong with Tony? I said, he didn't call you? Um, Jeff, what's wrong? I said, I said, he is. He's Tony, an ass. His I said, mother. Tony and Chance got married. Your brother is not a homosexual, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Clint and Lind aren't really excited about it either. Clint and Chance's mom. <laughs> uh, but so using the frat, what frat were you in? I was an SAE down there, and well, both my uncles were SAEs. And so I was, that was just kind of the route that I took. What's but, the redneck one down there? Is the KAs the redneck one? The KAs, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they've been kicked off a couple times and, that that whole Greek life, I, I think in the next 10 to 15 years, just the way that society is, yeah. that's going to be a thing of the like past. Like the royal family, it's done. Yeah. A buddy of mine. I'm was, surprised that you can still do it, though. Like when you look at all the shit that they do and kind well, of the way that they. The SAEs party. got kicked off. I mean, everybody at some point or another has been kicked off these campuses. And yeah. 
just going forward, everybody gets offended by anything that's out of line. And I mean, the, it's just the world we live in. Do you have to do the elephant walk? <laughs> the best party. Or I guess it's the other way. <laughs> the best party I ever was in, at, went to in my life was at uh, University of Texas Arlington. A buddy of mine was in a fraternity. I'm not going to mention the fraternity because I do not want to shed this light on them. But they had the first black fraternity had a house moved in next door to them. And they had There Goes the Neighborhood Party. Oh. It was fucking an awesome party, though. But that's the way things have changed since yeah. then. Now you I don't be blatantly even... racist then, and now we're now we're <laughs> now we want equal rights for it women. Was all, it was all about a good time for us. Right. I didn't racist. I didn't dislike anybody because of what color their skin was. Right. I mean, I thought shit. I'd have dated Halle Berry if she'd have been available. If Halle Berry would have dated me, <laughs> you know, I, bet I still, would've. I still, Michelle would be out the road, and Halle would be in the house. <laughs> if Halle could learn to make fried chicken and uh, chocolate chip cookies like my wife does, I'd marry her tomorrow. That's, that's but but I went to there goes the neighborhood party. But life right. was so different back then. About Way different, yeah. And the the black people I went to, I don't think none of them that I was friends with, I don't think they ever went without. They did their stuff and they they right. made fun of white people. I went to that party too. No, and I mean we had we had football players, we had all sorts of people that you know basketball players that show up to the parties and and it was a great experience down there. We had a lot of fun. I mean the parties that we we'd spend two or three weeks building a party with the stupid budget and you know have these big bands come in and play and and have a hell of a time and everybody had a good time and see my youth was different than yours no I, well, our budget my, was if we had five dollars to go out on and to buy some cheap beer and that was it and they were throwing no, budgets it, at their parties did y'all have these parties in albany no budgeted it, parties it, no. Bu- at bucky's house well that was later that no, one, they that, weren't budgeted. You no, just they weren't. Just show up. <laughs> I'd come home. That, that one year, so we had the Fort Griffin fan thing on. I, I don't know. We were probably all underage, but. Probably his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it, huh? We told everybody out there, we said the after party's at Bucky's house. And Bucky lived in a little old shotgun house, and he had his parking spot right in front of the house. And so we had, I don't know, there were, what, 30 or 40 cars over there? Bunch. I went I, I mean, there were. After the fan angle to go drink beer and <laughs> you didn't know. No. When I got home I thought, what the fuck? But we had his little parking spot opened up and he pulled right in there. It. Well, my best friend from high school, a guy named Colby Lowe, and we always hung out over at Bucky's house, but Colby has his shirt off, has a black felt cowboy hat on, jeans and his leggings, and he is on Bucky's roof and Bucky pulls up to his parking spot and gets out and Bucky's like what in the shit are y'all doing? And Colby goes, Bucky, catch me, and jumps <laughs> off the roof. No. In, no. And in, I catch him, in, like, cradle style on you the did? concrete. How, how, how old are you? I was probably 20. You'd have been 25, six, 26. And how old were y'all, 18? Yeah, they were 18. Now. Oh, you're the bad influence. You're the guy in the community that everybody's like, you I can't no believe that idea. fucking guy's hanging out with those kids. giving. Them. So you was buying beer for everybody. <clears throat> no, he wasn't. Yeah. Yes, he was. <laughs> Yeah, I bought a little beer from him. I mean, <laughs> Did your parents like Bucky? They love Bucky. Everybody loves Bucky. Did they then though? Did they not? I think don't. I don't. I don't think they knew that Bucky. I I played the pretty. I was pretty good, good about it, though. Like when they got drunk, well, He's, he set me half down. Half of them he, moved in the day they graduated. Just showed up. With we're here. Bed. Yeah, like two of them lived in my laundry room <laughs> on bed rolls. That is young and great. Those are the best times in your life. I had a buddy of mine lived in a closet in Dallas because they couldn't all afford the rooms. Yeah. So he paid like $100 a month to live in a closet. I mean, there was two bedroom, a little shotgun house, and there were six people living there. <laughs> what was the, what the bathroom look like? I mean, that was when clean, we cleaned every Sunday. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was, on Colby, Saturday night, it looked like shit then. Yeah, Colby Lowe had bathroom duty. He got to clean the bathroom every Sunday. Oh, it was fun. all the way at the back of the house. Yep. God damn, I could not imagine what that it, fucking toilet looked like. My rent was free, though. Well, yeah. What, so everybody paid you? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Pretty Bucky smart. Took 250 bucks. And you were everybody living on your parents' two, place? Everybody paid 250 Everybody paid 250 Rent was 600 Was you living on the ranch? No, I was living at this house. In oh, town. in town? Oh, I bet your neighbors hated you. No, they were awesome. Really? They were awesome. Yeah. That's what you thought. I bet they thought, boy, I'm glad this bitch grew up. No, he really did. They were two sisters. Yeah, that lived next door. One morning, uh... <laughs> This I get woke. One. I get woke up by somebody shaking me, and I'm in the living room floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's your house, but you're sleeping in the living room floor. Front door's wide open. Oh Jesus! Pickups running in the front yard. Oh. Door of the pickups open. She's like, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. <laughs> it's like eight o'clock in the morning. 
That's why. Right. Can you t- close my door and turn my truck off? Yeah. I am not okay. Yeah, this was a bad one. <laughs> now, Lester's older than you. Yeah. So was he around at this time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was there almost every day, too. <laughs> so uh-huh. Lester and Tiny, as he calls you Tiny. Yeah. So yeah. Lester's a great guy. Oh, he's I, awesome. That, well, you know what? We, we don't have Lester's no more in this world. No. There's not none of them like no. that anymore. Because Lester... You and Lester are about the same. Yeah. You don't see people like that no more. That, mm-hmm. that, that Kids... this Some parents do not like me. Kids like me. Teenage boys... I've always... That, sound, that sounds really bad. Yeah. Teenage that. boys <laughs> love them. Start but, over. But whenever <laughs> Jeff walks into the room, <laughs> teenage boys love it. But those kids all that played ball them. for me and stuff, they always loved me because I could... Rela- I'd talk to them like they were... I didn't talk to them like they were... I didn't talk down to them. Yeah. And and they liked... It. You don't see that hardly anymore. You me know? And, me and Les coached Little League one year. We didn't win a single game, but we had a lot of damn fun. And the kids probably <laughs> loved y'all. You're damn right. Yeah, and they probably still loved you when they got out of high school. Oh, yeah. That's the kids now. I don't know none of these kids. I coached none of these kids growing up. But all of them up until a couple of years ago had, had dealt with me. So they all like me. They visit with me in town. Parents don't talk that motherfucker, but the kids like me. Yep. So yeah. your parents like Lester too? Oh, yeah. They love Les. I mean, Bucky, Les... It, they're all they're good people, but they are. But Les, it's it's black and white. He's going to tell you what he thinks, and he doesn't care. Oh, I think he's great. If, if he offends anybody, and he'd offend both of us sitting here at this table right now. But he also throw us under the bus and run over us too. Oh yeah, he's all about that. His wife is the perfect companion for him. Are they not married yet, Smokey? Common law. Yeah, so, yeah, it's yeah. about. They're going on what eight years at least. But that she's the perfect match for him. You damn right. Perfect match. Oh yeah, because she throws it back at him. Yeah, and, she ain't gonna and, no shit. And he doesn't like it from time to time, but it's pretty funny. So how long did this bachelor pad thing go on? Let's see. I lived there. Shoot. I was in college. I was in college when you moved. No, because me and Mike moved in there. Two thousand. No, no, moved out. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand nine to two thousand. When I met Lacey, I had to get a new house. You had to. What did she think of this scene? Like, I'm sure she came over several times and she's like, "What the fuck have you got I going on here?" S- I hired four girls to clean that house <clears throat> on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday <laughs> for her to show up Monday at spring break for the first time, and it was spotless. <laughs> did you tell everybody else not to come home? Yeah, yeah I told everybody to go away. <laughs> You're gone. Yeah, <laughs> rinse free. No, it actually, was just me and Rob Scotty living there at the time. They yeah, were, they were all Rob. in college. Everybody kind of moved on. How did you two meet? Me and Lacey. Yeah, you and Lacey. At a rodeo. Her brother. I thought it was a rodeo, and you told her well, mom you were going to marry her. No, that that was the second time. No, that was the first time I met her. Yeah, yeah. you told her mother-in-law I you met her, marry her. So I met her brother, and he invited me to a rodeo down in Call Station. And we went down there, and we walked in his house, and I had to just turn around and walked out because I was like, holy shit. I got a big boner. I thought, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a big one before. Can't go to a party with this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn, Levi's girlfriend's hot, and her mom and dad were sitting there. and So that evening... We go to the Dixie Chicken and we're just all hanging out. And Lacey comes, one of her friends, and I go to talk to her and I walk up to her and I was like, "Hey, how are y'all?" And then I was like, "Cool." Turn around, walk off. I was like, "Shit, I didn't know what to say." That's all I got. So a few more natural lights, and then I walked up to Beth and I was like, "You want to dance?" She's like, "Absolutely not." And I said, like, "Okay." <laughs> so I put my arm around her. Is that said, the do- the mother in law? My mom or mother in law? Yeah. I put my arm around her. I said, you realize I'm going to be your son-in-law one day. And she says, no, you will not. <laughs> Turns out. You are. Four Lucky years later. Yeah. <laughs> Was she excited about this now? She likes me now. But she didn't at first. Well, I mean, it's not that she didn't like me. I was just, I wasn't very gentle, so. <laughs> wasn't very gentle. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't tame. I wasn't house broke yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a hood one. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of parents that way, too. I was. Hmm. You ever get door slammed in your face? During daytime, I was the guy you wanted your daughter to marry. At nighttime, I was not that guy. You ever had door slammed in your face? Mm -mm. I dated a a doctor's daughter, and I'm not gonna say her name. Her dad's, her mom's a bitch. But anyways, I went to pick her. I went to pick her up, and it was pouring (coughs) down fucking rain. And I was on their back porch on the side. You know, you go in. It was rain was on me and stuff. She opened the door. He's here. Slammed the door. <laughs> I was a fucking end of that deal. Gosh, damn. We well, only went out 14 times after that, but boy, they fucking hated my guts. Uh, I, took uh, a, uh, uh. I took a pistol with me to take some of the ex-girlfriend stuff back to her one time. Afraid her daddy was going to give it on your No, her. She's a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Is she a local girl or a no, college girl? No. No. So, South Texas. So did you go to Austin ever with him and hang out? Uh, uh, one time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? A couple times. How was yeah. it? Uh-huh. It was good. Those those guys from the city didn't 
they were like, who's this Bucky Nail? I said, oh, he's one of my best friends from Albany. He's down here because Bucky's brother lives in Austin, so he'd be down there occasionally visiting him. And anyway, we your brother still live in Austin? Mm-hmm. We'd go to the bars, and they it was kind. Of, they were kind of all shell shocked by Bucky. Yes, he's our Democrat, and we love him. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't he is. Gonna ask yeah, so he is a liberal. Yeah, God, that's got to be tough on. Con- it'd be best to not even discuss stuff. We don't. That's that's the only yeah, way to be. We don't. I've got a buddy of mine whose daughter is, and he and he t- and they have a horrible relationship. And I'm like, there's got to be a time. No, it's, we it's, all get along. It's like having if your kid comes home and he's a devil worshiper, he's still your kid. I mean, my you brother's ain't gonna be proud of it, but you still he's still your kid. There ain't nothing your two boys will ever do that will <laughs> don't ever say that, no. Dad. They I may hold a fucking grudge. They may, <laughs> they may disappoint you sometimes, but to not you got to think about my brothers in the old business. His two main incomes are oils, oil and cows. So yeah, he shouldn't be a Democrat. I know it's weird, but that whatever. fucking makes no sense. It's kind of like, like our Kevin old state, our state representative here, Democrat in the oil business and land business. Well, fuck, how are you? It don't make sense. Yeah. Kevin Costner ain't no fucking. He, no, but he, play, he plays a big. They're big getting shot. rid of his ass. They're killing him off. No, he's getting rid of them. Jeff, get uh, this straight. Uh, well, I did, he did told Taylor shits. Sheridan, "Fuck off! I'm not filming, but for one week, get what you need." No, that's what I meant. Is he plays this guy right? But in a family, you've got to just. <clears throat> it's politics. You may oh, think yeah. that he's your brother and you love him and you want him to succeed and hope to fuck he don't raise any more Democrats. I will say this: he was so disappointed in Obama the second term he voted for Trump the first time. Oh, so he's got common sense. And then he was a little bit more disappointed because he was mean tweets, you know. Yeah, that's, that's what I love. About that's him. Ter- terrible mean tweets. Now let's fuck up the world, or let's tweet and call some bitch a fat bitch. I mean, what the hell? I you saw know? Um, somebody no. was talking about the other day. Uh, Obama was basically just a continuation of Bush. He 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 deported more people than Bush ever did. He was dropping. He got us into seven new wars. He was dropping so many bombs a day that the United States actually ran out of bombs. We had no more bombs to drop on anybody. Making that money for that war machine. But like every, you know, he's this big liberal icon, but he was, he got us into more wars and he de- deported more people and it was just fucking travesty for this country. Yeah. I, does your brother have voters remorse now, you think? Uh, I don't know. Boy, it'd be terrible to think that Joe Biden is. Can you imagine going through life right now? And I met a lady in Mexico that worked for the Homeland Department, Homeland Security. And, uh, we were talking, and she was an army vet, and I respect Damn. her, and we we discuss stuff, and she talked about, you know, she goes, oh, we're getting things under control on the border. <laughs> From what? Yeah. I go, it's fucked up now. We're, well, it was just left in such a bad shape. No. Who the fuck's been lying to you? That's oh, mine. Fucker. There, I said, there ain't a damn thing was broke down there until you fuckers took over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I said, me, I told her, I said, me and you just have to agree to disagree, but I said, you're number one, huh? The only person I know that actually thinks Joe Biden is doing a good job, because nobody else does. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't oh. think my brother thinks he's doing a good job, but he will never tell you either. No, you know. But the mean tweet deal just floors me. I don't give a fuck if you're if you like if I'm going to get my heart operated on, and you say that guy right there is the best heart surgeon. He's going to do the best for your health, but he's a real fucking asshole. And well, he, he grabbed a woman he, on her pussy one yeah, time. Yeah, don't give a, a shit. He's a yeah. doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. You, but this other guy over here is don't have a fucking clue what's going on. But everybody's going to tell you he's great because he does everything their way. Right. No, I want that fucking asshole. No, guy. you want the you want yeah. the doctor. Have y'all had, have y'all been? I've, this is a funny story. Have y'all fucked with the new duct tape lately? Uh-uh. No. God damn! I was I was I was using duct tape the other day, and I t- tore a piece off because I knew I was gonna need it later, and I stuck it on my lip. Huh? Yeah, like you put duct tape on your lip. Yeah, because I knew I was gonna, I was gonna need it again. So There's no take, counter space. T- there. I was gonna yeah, take you, it off the you lip. Can put it on your hand or yeah. your sleeve. My, yeah. yeah, but I did most of the time. I'll you just put, when you get done peeing, you just don't put your dick on your fucking lips. <laughs> Anytime I'm fucking with tape, I just put put it right there. It fucking ripped the hide off my goddamn lip, and I took a sip of that whiskey. It burned. Oh, that's why you jumped. Motherfucker. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you got a bad sip of whiskey. <laughs> I didn't no. tell you. must be stabbed. Motherfucker. My lip's still burning. It's a, it's it's not the the duct tape. It's called being fucking Mexico, and your lips got fucking well, burned. that's probably up. it, too. Sunburn. It, it yeah. took a big old fucking, like, this whole side of my lip has got <clears throat> no skin on it. Speaking of Mexico, did y'all see the shit at Matamoros that happened yeah. the other day? Okay, I don't know the whole story, but oh, what yeah. I was told was those kids didn't go over there to buy drugs. Like, one of them was going to have surgery, right? I, what well, I heard, it was your medical surgery, stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, but and um, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. It's big pharma. We went to the pharmacy in Mexico, and I'm telling you what, I look like a drug smurfer coming home. I bought, and this is no shit. Andy was there. Retin, retin A is that what it's called? It's retinol. Some, retinol. Retinol. It's, oh, yeah. it's that shit women put yeah. for fucking yeah. wrinkles and shit. I bought Michelle the Pro Series. I bought 20 boxes of that shit. Okay. 
I did not know that one box will last about three lifetimes. So okay. she's got enough for a bunch of people for a long time. They had ibuprofen 400s for a dollar a box. 20 count. 20 count. Tylenol 3 was like $2. Yeah. So I'm bought, shit they oh, give you I'm when no you're having jokes. babies. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you right now, if customs would open <clears> up my bag, they think, my first got a drug shop somewhere. They've got a pharmacy somewhere. They're reselling. I bought 60 boxes of shit. I'm telling you, the whole luggage was full of just this shit. Well, it's cheap down there. I bought antibiotics. I bought Z packs. I don't know if you're allowed to bring that shit back, but I didn't bring it back if you're not. But that's the kind of <laughs> shit that you buy. But why in America is it, why can't we just go get antibiotics at the, uh, over the counter? I mean, I don't understand. That's a prohibitive, you know, that money. That's right. Amoxicillin, They're not prohibitive or preventative. Amoxicillin, amoxicillin was, I think we got like, we could have gotten, if you're allowed to bring it or not. I don't know. We could have gotten like 180 tablets for 50 bucks. So we're down 50 bucks, but we got 180 tablets of amoxicillin. Yeah. And yeah. I hope we don't ever have to use them. Z pack. Yeah. We bought yeah. a bunch of those. And amoxicillin, <coughs> should, they should be giving that shit away yeah. anyway. I mean, come on. It's just I every, kind of similar. Every thing. insurance company would think that they, you know what, let everybody get four bottles of these to keep in their house a year. If someone gets sick, they take them. Well, if we brought some back and we didn't, we would have enough to store for in case something happens. My but, mom, the other day, she opened our fridge and she goes, oh, I don't miss these days. <laughs> the, and all the pink the, shit. Top shelf was just full yeah. of medicine. Yeah. Antibiotics. Yep. Yep. You know, but, um, but that was that's what you should do. Yeah. But it shouldn't cost. My point is, if a, a ibuprofen four hundred cost a dollar a box for, for a twenty, 20 for yeah, twenty for fifty 20. cents a, or no five cents a pill, yeah, five, cents. five cents a pill. Why the fuck are we paying fifty seven dollars for that same twenty kills? Here, I'm gonna look it up right now. I didn't even look. I was gonna look up and see. I have to have. I have uh, asthma during hunting season. The dust and shit gets me, and I have to have an inhaler. It's three bucks over there. It's like seventy five here. No yeah. shit. Three dollars for the same shit, albuterol. That's all it is. I did not look to see what Viagra was. I wish I would have now. <laughs> One thing I should have got. It's fucking. It's brand name. It's Pfizer Viagra. It's got it all on the box. I knew a That's lot of crazy. people growing up that used to go to Madame Morris really to get medicine. But it, it's just a shame that that is where we are in this country. Is people are going across for the first time. People are going across the border because shit's better. Yeah. Um. But. I don't, I, when we were kids, we we always went to South Padre Island for like a week during the summer. And I remember my stepdad and my mom. It was one day we were going to Mexico, and we'd go to Matamoros, walk across, and then they'd get everything they needed, and, and they bought medicine all the time down there. What did they end up doing? How did they kill the people? Because they found two of them were alive. Supposedly, two of them were got caught in a crossfire, and they took put all four of them in there, and they found two dead. That one girl called from the hospital, and she's okay now. Supposedly, yeah, I don't know. I just saw bullet holes in the van, but they were just down see, there. I, they were just like I, in I a think market. I, I read something <clears throat> saying that they were one of the cartels, whatever, whichever one it was, thought that they were from Chile. Does that sound right? Chile's like with onions and stuff, or Chile, the with country, the country. Okay, Chile. I don't There's know. Some other country. They thought it was a different cartel from there because they were African descent. Oh, they were? Yeah. And they shot the van up is another deal I read, too. I don't know. The, it was 70. There, the, ibuprofen 400, you can buy it 70 cents a piece. So you can pay a nickel a piece down there. You can pay 70, 70 cents, cents a piece, a piece in America. Well, I, I have enough that if I was making pseudomethamphetamine or whatever the hell it is, I'm telling you, I look like I was some fucker that they would have arrested <laughs> a long time ago for making meth at the house. Oh, you needed some drain on well, the bathroom. When we got through fucking customs, I was like, Whew, thank God. <laughs> thank God we're through that. Yeah. That was a close and one. And then I put them in Michelle's bag. Like, huh, Michelle, we you might a, be on your own. We had a girl from Albany that she ended up dying in a Mexican prison because she would go down there to uh, Laredo and she would uh, buy her insulin mm -hmm. across oh. the border. She's a bad diabetic. And they stopped her at the border because she had a bunch of insulin. And they uh, put her in jail and she kept telling everybody that she needed her insulin and she ended up dying. Because oh, I thought they were white. I don't know why. I guess I didn't see the video very well. And I could be that's, wrong. No, they're black. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. They, it wasn't Chile. It was some other country. But they, they thought that they were they a were rival a gang. rival gang, yeah. Or cartel, whatever you want to call it. They just fucking threw them around all the, up in there, didn't they? Then getting back on the airplane. Did they dump the bodies or what? No, I they mean, took all of them away and they found two later dead. I think they're dead already right there. Right. And then what they do, the the two that were alive, they just dropped them off at a hospital? One of them's in a hospital, called her mom. The problem is, 
Uh, well, the biggest problem is is there are CIAs involved neck deep in all this shit. That's yeah. the problem. If we had true government, you could take a strike force and you could knock out them cartels in about 30 minutes. I mean, we have the technology and shit between drones and shit. We could take out all them cartels, where they're cooking shit at, where they're making shit. You can't tell me the CIA can't figure out where their, their stash houses and stuff. Right. But they don't yeah. want to end that business because that's how they fund a lot of their shit. We, uh, coming back from Mexico, <clears throat> we're all sitting at the part, front part of the airport. Andy comes back. <clears throat> they're calling for mom on the loudspeaker. I go, huh? They want mom at the loudspeaker. It's gate six, American Airlines. She was in the bathroom. We're going to do something. So I go to him and said, hey, my name is Jeff Stanfield. Do you, are you with Dawn? I said, yeah, that's my wife, Dawn Michelle. Okay, we need her to bring all her lucky, all her belongings up here so we can do a, a pat down. I said, okay, a search on her. She was Just chosen. a random, a random, random search. search. I said, okay. Well, it's funny because when we were at the hotel that morning, I checked everybody in for our flights, and I couldn't check Michelle in. Wouldn't let us check her in. Wouldn't let us check her in. Wouldn't let us check her in. Went to go get the boarding pass, the airplane. They give us our boarding pass for her. I think, well, no big deal. Well, they get her, everybody in that line and had the same deal. They went through all of Michelle's shit. Yeah. She got a brand new iPad. She couldn't get the case off. The guy said, well, you got to leave it here then if you can't get it. I'm like, if it's fucking so hard you can't get the case off, you think we're smuggling fucking. I, I lost my, yeah. my, my personality for a little bit. Yeah. I got fucking pissed. So I went and I ripped that motherfucker up. I just fixed those some bitch in the fucking floor and told him to keep the motherfucker. Just like Jeff, twelve hundred dollars. Don't you dare! Well, I was pissed. <laughs> Finally got it apart, and they looked at it. Oh, okay. So then, when I was getting on the plane, I took the little Oswaldo from American Airlines. I said, "Do I send you the bill for the Otter Box, or do I send it to the fucking Mexican fucking government?" I'm sorry, sir. It's just a routine deal. I said, "Ain't fucking nothing routine about it." I said, "You went through her fucking flip flops that she was wearing. The fuck you think you're gonna hide on some flip flops?" And Michelle's like, "Jeff, shut, 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 shut." I'm got on the fucking airplane. You can ask my wife or my father in law. My father in law hates flying with me because if we fly, I'm getting searched. <laughs> every time. You're on a list of some sort. We've my never... first time was in Cancun Airport. Two guys walked up. You're told with me? me? Come with me. We went to a room, told me to get undressed. And I said, I've been down this road before. <laughs> and, they, and they said, Here we go again. Yeah, this they... happened to me in Austin, Texas <laughs> once. <laughs> he said, They told me to get down in my underwear. I said, Sir, I don't wear underwear. <laughs> He says, well, I said, he goes, take your shirt and your pants off. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> Can I leave You're my boots in? Can, in. <laughs> Can I leave my boots in? I had my socks on and my baseball cap. <laughs> what did they think you done? They went through all my, and like they took everything out of my bag. Mm-hmm. And then left it on the floor, and they were like, "Okay, you're free to go." This and I'm is like, what's crazy? Had to pack Put everything back up. Back in there. Right. I could have taken Michelle's iPad and shit and right. carried the bags on myself, and they wouldn't even fucking known it was it wasn't yeah, her stuff. Exactly. It was, but the guy in front of her said, "This happens to me." He said, "I was here a week or two ago, and it just happened." I thought maybe because me and Michelle had just been in Mexico that we had alerted that you know these fuckers are coming to Mexico. Yeah, a lot. it could have been. And then after yeah. all the shit we had in her fucking luggage, I thought, "Oh, that's why." Yep. This is it. She's a Smurfer. <laughs> when we went to St. Lucia, we were going through, we had gone through everything. And like, we were about to just, we were about to get on the plane and somebody comes around a curtain and grabs me and pulls me on the other side of the curtain. Jesse's like, where the fuck did he go? <laughs> so I had to fucking yell at her like, Hey, they got me back here. And then I already, I, I can't hear number one most of the time, but like if somebody talks in a weird accent, I can't understand what they're saying. Boy. So he kept like telling me what was going on. I was like, what? So it took him two or three times. And then he was getting frustrated because I couldn't understand what he was saying. Take but, your clothes off. Yeah. But Jesse was. And then like five minutes later, they let me go. Well, now, hold on. You did steal a conch shell on the beach. You did. <clears throat> I did. And that could have been what it was about. Probably. It might have been. They didn't find it, though. Shit was already under the plane by the time they grabbed me. Somebody we knew or know. Was vaping on the plane. Yeah. They say on an airplane, do not vape, vape. do not smoke, blah, blah, blah. Could you imagine getting caught vaping, going to Mexico, and then get on the no-fly list? Yeah. That'd be a bad deal. I'm telling you right now. we talking about this guy a while ago? Yeah. Yeah. I figured. I couldn't believe it. This this person would just let it, he would suck it in, and then I guess it just let it sit there. Dissolve in your lungs? And then he'll just, that's how you're going to get popcorn popcorn lungs. But could you imagine, though, Sir? Taking that chance. Yeah, and then we get on the plane. Uh, you're not flying anymore. You're on the no fly list. How the fuck are you gonna get home? It's a long boat ride to Texas. <laughs> one of the one of the ladies that was there with us, her mom was a stewardess, and she said, like, right when COVID was happening, they wasn't like if you weren't wearing your mask, they don't even tell you. 
Like you get off of a plane, if they've already told you more than a couple times, they just leave you alone and they hand you a piece of paper when you get to where you're going and it's you're on the no-fly list. Good luck getting where this, the fuck you're going. This guy was like in Seward, Alaska, and Alaska Airlines is the only people that flow there. Yep. And I, and it might be the wrong town, but that's what the story is. Yeah. And it was just like, he couldn't get fucking back. He was in Alaska, flew to like South Carolina, was being a dick on a plane about the mask, and they're like, okay, sir. That mask deal on a plane, I mean, flying on a plane... Oh, it sucks. We've all done it, and it's fine, but you don't want to be... It's fucking they're, awful. They're, it's circulated air. We're all breathing no, the same yeah. shit anyways. We came, right. we came back from Seattle right after 9-11, or not after, not after fucking COVID, the new 9-11. We flew back, and um, I was in line getting a rental car. We got back to Dallas, and the flight, thunderstorms, and Abilene, we missed our connecting flight. So I told Michelle, and I, we had to get back home. I said, we're going to rent a car and drive to Abilene. I'll drop it off, and we'll get our car, and we'll drive home. So I'm in line at Enterprise or one of them fucking places, and this lady in front of me screams. Ah! Fuck, I'm looking around like, what the fuck's happening? And she's screaming at me. <laughs> no mask. Yeah. No mask. I have a fucking mask on. I'm on yeah. a fucking phone. And she's got a fucking face guard on, the splash deal, earmuffs, fucking gloves, a face mask and stuff. Let's see if I can pull that up. And huh? her, and her, mm. what are you pulling up? There was a picture that I took of a Chinese lady. Oh, she looked like she was going in for surgery. Yeah, but but that's the thing. I mean, we knew several people back at the very beginning of COVID that were sticklers, wore masks everywhere, sanitized their hands, did this, did that, and I'll kiss your ass. They were the first ones that, that that got COVID. Well, this and, and you know that, later down the road. Now, I mean, they're saying all oh, those masks really didn't. Now, do if anything. I see somebody wearing a mask, I'm like, what the fuck's right. wrong with that idiot? Yeah. You know, and then you feel real bad if something's really wrong with them. But if for sure, I'm always and, thinking, and I, know, I know there are people that are compromised that, yes. that need to do that, and I respect that. But as far as the general public goes, that's, that's do you not a look joke. at them and think of a dumb liberal fucker? Because that's what I always think every time I see one of them. But this well, lady screamed at me, and then her husband looked at me and he goes, "You're not practicing social distancing, right, the bitch? You ran up problem? to me. He goes, You're not minding your own fucking he business. Goes, <laughs> he goes, I'm a doctor, and I go. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. I said, there ain't no fucking law in Texas that says you have to fucking stand six feet apart. I said, I'm a judge in Texas. I know these things. He goes, yeah. well, I'm telling you. I said, listen, we just got off the same fucking airplane. We're breathing the same fucking air. The only difference is, Doc, I was riding in first class and you weren't. <laughs> Paid $75 extra ride what first that? class, but he didn't know that. He really <laughs> fucking pulled the... Oh, my oh yeah. God, fuck yeah. yeah. What a no, but we, He we, threw out the physician world like he was oh, something special. Bitch, I'm a fucking... I'm something. a physician. I don't, give two I don't shits. care. You were flying coach, bitch. No, that's, we, that's we, basically we, what I said. We uh, went down to Austin for a wedding back in January, and there are people walking their dogs down the sidewalk. I'm not talking one or two, like the vast that. majority still wearing masks. And I'm like, you're out in the open air. What, what, are, you, people, what are you trying to prove? I mean, it's, it's almost like they're trying to prove yeah. a point at yeah. this stage of the game. Right. Versus, I've seen some people paddleboarding in San Diego with a where? fucking mask on paddleboarding, enjoying the ocean air. Yeah. First of all, I would what, what, salt water is probably yeah. What's going to hurt you out there? Yes, yeah. it's cra- it's fucking crazy. Them things made me so damn claustrophobic. Really? Oh yeah, because I don't like like hot air hitting like the heater, like a and a car or something hitting me in the face. And I can't do it, and then me breathing and that stuff just staying right there. Just the stupidest shit is someone at the airlines decided. We need to wear a mask, but now if you want to eat Cheetos and drink water, you don't have to wear it then yeah. because it's oh, not yeah. dangerous. I'd have been yeah, I, ke- I kept that bag of Cheetos <laughs> up for the whole damn yeah. fight. And people, people wanted it to, every time the stewardess walked by. Yeah. Can you imagine some motherfucker though actually thinking that and saying, "You know, that's a really a good rule. We'll do that." And then yeah. they changed it like halfway through. There, they they got to where they were saying, "If you're actively eating, you can lower actively eating." How do you drinking. actively not eat? Well, if the bag, you're either if eating the bag or you're just, not. yeah, if the bag's just sitting there, they're like, "Well, sir." Yeah. You're not actively eating. It's like so explosive diarrhea. To... You name some diarrhea pull. that's not explosive. <clears throat> it's true. You're going to need to pull yeah. that up. Yeah. Um, but I was like you, though, because, you know, got a fucking breathing problem. And now all of a sudden I got to strap this mask on. I just knew that something was going to happen and I was going to need going to like a fucking shock from not being able to get enough air. I hear you. Well, but I'm glad we're through the all The mask days shit. are behind us. <clears throat> something else coming, though. This, this, we got another election coming, and they need something because they're they're losing all their base. They're gonna the deep state's gonna try some shit, and they own the media. Something's gonna we're gonna get the chicken pox or some shit's coming back again. Because whatever monkey pox didn't last, so something's coming. I'm gonna tell you right now. Well, and and, and now they're all saying you know the COVID virus was lab leaked, and yep. you know all these politicians are saying, well, hell, two and a half years ago, 
you know, we were being shunned for even mentioning that yeah. it was a lab leak. We've got da- and, YouTube shit that we got pulled off for shit. Everything yeah. that's now right. is true. We've got strikes on our YouTube channel because we uh, spread COVID misinformation about the origins of COVID. No. They're not putting that fucking strike back on, on our two. Like, you know, they're not taking it away. Yeah. Right. But, and like what, a lot of those things on YouTube, like it, you, you'll always carry a warning. So like we only get one strike and then we're gone for a week. Whereas if they took some of that stuff away, there'd be a little bit of grace period. But So once you get it, it stays there. <clears throat> yeah. And like what they're doing now is they go back. It's like once a month. It's usually around the 15th. No, it's usually around uh, the last week of the month. They go back like another 100 episodes. So in December, they were on, they were like in the 500s. January, they're in the 400s. I just got a notification about two weeks ago. Uh, episode 351 was taken down. So I'm assuming at the end of March, they're going to be in the twos. And it's, I mean, I don't know what we said back then. Hopefully they're going to get far enough away because like the big thing that they're getting, they're getting us for uh, the election uh, shenanigans and COVID. So if they get before that, then there's nothing they can take They've down. got some dedicated people. With this. <clears throat> Could you imagine sitting there watching <laughs> a podcast it. that you have no interest in? Like, sitting Just, there watching y'all two talk about hunting or whatever. Yep. That's your job. Oh, fuck that. And you know, uh, pounce just as soon as they say something I don't like. Yeah, but uh, it's I saw, all their opinion. I saw one of the, I think, it, I don't think it was YouTube. I think it was Instagram. There was some girl that puts her porn out there, her OnlyFans or whatever the fuck that, all, all that shit is. And she found a guy that worked for Instagram. So she was sleeping with him. So she, he would never ever, she, anytime her stuff would, that, anytime yeah. her stuff would get, you know, banned right. or anything, he'd go in there and change it all and fix it. And it was okay. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're telling me, wait, you two, you wouldn't have done, took advantage of some grown girl like that? No, sir. You, you <laughs> no, wouldn't have done sir. That? No. <laughs> I think he's full of shit, Bucky. What do you think? Yeah, Bucky ain't saying nothing. That's Remember when is. Zach went through the frat stage? He's popping his collar oh, yeah. and the old. I, I, I never got into polo that. hat. The, the, those guys wore their whitewashed Wrangler jeans, and I wore Levi five hundred ones, and they used to always give me hell. Did you, you have to carry a screw in your pocket or a bolt or something? No, no. We we had it. My first year down there, we had a uniform. We had to wear a, a Texas Longhorns t shirt, blue jeans, and tennis shoes every day. No ball caps, no jackets. Why you no know, ball be, caps? Oh, that, that no, that was a that was a privilege once you got oh, through pledge ship. Oh, oh. But, did they come by in a bus and pick you up like in the old school? No, you didn't no, have to we, throw we, a brick <laughs> off a wall or anything. We, uh, <laughs> no, we we lived kind of we lived in University Towers, which was right across the street from the SAE house, and so we just walked back and forth, and it it, it was a great time, great experience. Met a lot of good guys. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm telling you right so, now, so, some of those. You know, freshman year they kind of talk. I'm not kind of talk down to you. They <laughs> they talk down to you a lot, and you know, try to intimidate you. And I was a little country kid that I didn't give a shit. I've had plenty of ass eatings by my dad, and you're not. You yeah. don't even hold a candle to him. If, if I could do anything again, it would be to be a kid of means and be 18 years old and get to go off to college and be in a fraternity and do that for four years. Fuck it, six years. Make make the most mm, out of it. No, fuck that. Oh, it'd be fun again. You wouldn't want to do something like that. Just for four or five years? No. Nope. Oh, I, I would. wouldn't have won. Jesus didn't. Christ, Jeff, he told you about his bachelor's pad yeah, set up. Like, he did that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about go to Pussy U, where he was at for four or five years. That'd Pussy been fun. U. Farrah Fawcett got banged in one of the fraternities in the shower. That's a famous thing down there. Do you know who yeah. Farrah Fawcett is? Yes, sir. I'm yes, actually sir. surprised yeah. by that. I've, I've researched a, a little. Show. I've researched a little. Hit. Yeah, Farrah <laughs> was history. a hottie. Yeah. One of the frats down there, she had sex either in the fraternity house or a sorority. It's famous. What I want to know is who that lucky fucker is that did that shit. Because you know he's still bragging. Some 80-year-old man in the country club oh, yeah. right now. I fucked Farrah Fawcett. Back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how you know Michelle Obama ain't a woman. Because there'd be some guy banging, bragging about that shit. And that'd be nothing to brag about. <laughs> Can you imagine bragging about that? No, I wouldn't. I'm not no. finding anything well, I, I don't, on this. I wouldn't get in that predicament to start is with. Is that where the shooter was? That tower? Yes. Oh, oh, well, I got you a little funny story on that. So, my se- senior year, you live time in the... Time out, fr- time out. How is this going to be funny about that? I'm glad you said not, that. Well, not about not shit, funny. Ha, not, ha. No, not about Bucky. Relevant. You, you, you took it the wrong okay. way. It ties into the un, the okay. tower shooter. You have a relevant story. I thought yes. son of a bitch, you twisted bastard. <laughs> no, it's not like that. We go lick so, the blood spots. So, <laughs> so, so, so senior year, we all everybody lives at the fraternity house, and so I had a third floor room, balcony, 
And you're talking we, shit to the freshmen at this time. No, I, I was I was one of the pledge trainers, so I was in charge of all the incoming freshmen. My brother was one of them, so that was a little bit of a family dispute, but it was all good. Why did they want you to treat them differently? No, well they they had my my brother and my mom had told me they said if you run for pledge trainer, Rob is not going to the University of Texas. Well, my grandfather grandfather passed away. The fraternity signed me up, unbeknownst to me. Right. I get I get voted in. I was in Abilene. You're it, sticking his, to this his, story then, right? No, I swear to you. Okay. Going to his service, get voted in. Well, I call my dad and I said, Dad, I'm the pledge trainer. How are we gonna <laughs> deal with this? So we're out at a friend's ranch south of Albany one night for dinner and they had a, a son that was a senior that year. Well, they had gotten the SA newsletter that said, congratulations, Wade Montgomery, Wade Montgomery Noah Flaviano, for being pledge trainers. And <laughs> the wife said, Wade, we're just so thrilled that you're going to be a pledge trainer. That's going to be the greatest thing. And it was like my mom had seen a ghost. <laughs> I mean, she turned white. And I, I haven't heard her say many cuss words in my life, but she... She was disappointed. She, yes. On the way home. But anyway, so senior year, we live in the fraternity house. Well, our little getaway, we'd go down to the Cabela's in Buddha once a week and go jack around for a couple hours, and I'd buy a sack of corn and then bring it back to the fraternity house, and I had me a little corn pile in the backyard. Feeding them deer. Well, it was, it was squirrels and pigeons. <laughs> oh, you shooting them. But, so I buy this badass Benjamin pellet gun, scope. <laughs> You were all fucking set up. Hold, I'm going to look for a picture, too. Oh, no, this is good. Well, that, that was sophomore year when we shot. It's on my Facebook. It's one of my profile pictures on there. But so had this badass pellet gun, my bait pile down there. Well, on a rainy day, those pigeons would line up down the apartment complex across the street. And we would sit there and shoot them. And they'd Dink land them. on the sidewalks or park cars. And <laughs> we, we thought it was big town fun. I'm 55 years old. And this would still be fucking fun today. Oh, I guarantee you. And it, it, we had a great time. And so that one day, walked out of my room. And I had two two squirrels down there on my bait pile. Well, I'll get my pellet gun out, shoot one of them. Well, I'm going to... I see a kid walking, and he's a Middle Eastern kid, but he's walking down the sidewalk. Middle <laughs> Eastern kid. <laughs> Has he got a fucking the shiki on and shit? No, uh, well, we won't go that far. <laughs> but he's walking down the sidewalk, and I was like, shit, I need to get this gun put back in my room. And there's a metal railing across the top of that balcony. Well, the gun barrel hits it, and it, ding! Oh, no. And this kid looks up at me. Oh, fuck. And oh, I was like, fuck. So he, so he goes down there to the street corner and gets on his phone and I'm watching him and he's looking back up there and I was like, shit. So I put my gun up, go down to a buddy's room and we're playing golf on the Xbox or it whatever. Austin PD. I have, like, I have like 15 missed calls in a matter of five minutes. No. And I'm just decline, decline, decline. People are texting me. Hey, there's a SWAT team here. You oh, need it. fuck. I walk out of this, my buddy's room, and there are 15 cop cars, a SWAT truck, and the, the whole yard is cops, guns drawn, the whole... And so I walk in, and I was like, <laughs> "It's me, hey, guys, uh, I'm the guy you're looking for. <laughs> they're like, do you have a high-powered rifle? I said, no, sir, I got a pellet gun. And they get on the radio, and they're like, it's just a pellet gun. <laughs> so <laughs> Fucking Swahili boy. <laughs> so, so, so they come up to the third floor... And this head honcho, he he is pissed off. And he go, I said, my this pellet gun's in my room. He goes, go ahead and get it out. So I bring it out. I've had this thing like a week and bring it out. And he goes, what? why do you have this in the middle of Austin, Texas? I said, and it was like God placed them there. I said, well, I'm shooting squirrels and pigeons down there on my bait pile. <laughs> and we look down, there's like four squirrels and like 10 <laughs> pigeons and dove. And the rest of these cops are laughing their ass off. They're like, who is this guy? <laughs> what is he doing in our town? Yeah, yeah. He goes, where did you dream up the idea to do this and think that it would be all right in the middle of Austin? I said, well, I grew up in a little small town out in West Texas. I said, I, I just figured I'd try it till I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, and he took down all my information. I said, if you have to confiscate this gun, I said, I understand. I said, but I've had it for a week and a half. I said, I'll take it to the ranch, and you'll never get another call regarding me again. And You'll never see this yeah, again. And, and he let me keep it, but it was it was pretty comical. The, what, whole, the whole fraternity, I mean. they That's oh, fucking man. great. Yeah. Well, soon, I bet, but, I bet I when mean, that guy looked up, you're like, 
No, I, I, I knew I was busted right then and there. No. See, I think this is funny, but I'm also the guy that drove around and used to shoot at prostitutes with BB guns in Wichita Falls growing up. So, <laughs> fuck out the window. So, I thought it was funny as shit. Oh, hell. Our sophomore year. Life was different in the 80s. It was. Our sophomore year, we had we had what we called the safaris, but we'd drive through the parking garages and shoot pigeons, and we had a pellet gun on either. It was like a <laughs> hog hunting trip out here. You'd have two guys in the back seat, a pellet gun out each window, <laughs> and you'd, you know, first floor, you'd shoot a couple, second floor, but... We'd drive those parking garages, and we we never did get... We would have See, gone to jail doing that. Country boys make up ways to have fun. Well, it was People just, don't understand that, because when you live... I have people come here all the time, like, what do y'all do for fun? Figure it like, out. I haven't yeah. been... I, don't, I can't remember how many times I've been bored living in Knox City. Drink yeah. around and throw beer I mean, and fucking we, we road used, signs. My front yard used to have 20 people every night. People come down in the summertime. We'd sit in my front yard. Well, that was... That was, was fun. That, that was fun. fun. Right. And we... we but... It, Growing up, we we shot at prostitutes, but you find shit to do. That's hilarious, you know. But yeah, they didn't no. think so. And, but those city guys, I mean, they they couldn't even fathom the the <laughs> mindset or thought process on how, how you, you could get away with that. With or yeah, and shoot, we we had a great time. So what did you have to do as pledge trainer? So I was in charge of all. I, my brother's pledge class. I think there were fifty two freshmen, but. I would, and, and as I told my parents, I said, I would rather be in charge of those kids, especially with it being my little brother. Right. I'd rather be in charge and have some jackass from the city that's messing right. with them all the time, keeping them, you know, doing whatever. So you basically make their no, life I, as I, easy or hard as you. Right. Want and, it and it depended on them. I mean, you know, we, we had we had one kid that was accused of raping a girl, and we made it pretty damn hard on him, kicked him out of the fraternity. I mean, it was it was a serious deal, but. You know, the fun part of it is those are all my brother's friends, and so they come out to the ranch now, and we've got a good relationship, and right. it, it's it's fun to see those guys, and it was an additional 60 friends that I gained by doing that. And But it, but at the <laughs> at the beginning of it, you know, my, my mother and my brother were very upset with me. <laughs> What's the most you think you've drank in, like, a night? Like, when you were doing this pledge thing, because that's what scares me about all this is – I got, you got a bunch I, of twenty one year old kids, and they're like, "Hey, you need to go drink that whole bottle of Everclear or whatever." Well, I got my so my freshman year, I got in trouble, and and it's not on the fraternity; it was self inflicted. But um, some guys had us over to a house, and we were drinking and whatever, and they gave us a bottle and said, "You know, y'all start drinking." Well, I just they had us on a time limit, and you know, I took it upon myself to just go ahead and. Smash the time fin fin <laughs> finish the bottle and I, I didn't want anybody getting in trouble hell i was playing air drums and they, they wound up taking me and putting me in my bed and i i never went to the hospital or anything but you know in this day and time like back in the 70s and 80s like that was a big it, it was yeah. very prevalent yeah, in all nice. the fraternities you know and and they, it was it was really bad um but now there was a a pledge I guess that had been early 2000s. But anyway, he, you know, had been drinking at the fraternity house, tried to jump from one balcony up to the next, fell off, and wound up um, dying. And, and from that day forward, I mean, it, there was a new mindset as far as the, the forced drinking and hazing. And, you know, that that's what I'm saying. Going forward, I, I don't think the Greek life, I think in the next 10 to 15 years, just with our current society and, you know everything that's going on. I, th I think they're going to limit it to such that it, it's kind of a social group. But right. So even yeah. when you were there, you saw a big change from how it was two or three decades before. For you sure. Were there. For sure. No. Well, I mean, you, you know, you have all these. A lot of the dads were in the same fraternities, right. and, and you hear the stories that they had to go through, and you know, it was cattle prods and standing in ice water all night, and you know, but that okay. was way back in the day right. that nobody had cell phones, nobody right. had instagram facebook and we also had a spine and some balls back then and you took the bad and the good right it, and you it, knew whatever bad it was it was gonna be you were gonna be the gonna other be one doing it yes correct i'm not saying that some of the drinking shit's kind of stupid and crap there's no doubt about that right. and then there's dangerous and crap oh yeah but if you watch animal house which is a tv show but it's portraying fraternity life in the 60s right and they're talking about uh getting diet pills for the girls and all this other shit to stay up all night and stuff. They've been doing this shit since there's been colleges. For sure. But I think we have gotten to a point in society where we are ruining ourselves and our kids 
because we're not teaching them there's anything tough in life. And I'm not saying fraternity life's the best for everybody. No, but I'm just right. saying you, 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 but, you're but, teaching but, them that everybody should be given something without having to put anything into it. And that's why the hazing was there. But but Jeff, that's that's the deal. Is like you know, I grew up in a real community. I busted my ass my whole childhood. Like we we saw hardships. I yes. had my dad pissed off, cussing in my face. Go do this, go do. This. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I love my dad right. to death. It's just but, life. But it was we had hardships. Those guys in the city, they are handed, and and I don't mean that in a bad way either. But it's a different style. No, of what life, you're saying is right? the truth, that, though. That, that they don't ever see that. They don't ever have anybody tell them no, mm-hmm. or question them, or force them to do something. And you know, they they figured out a long time ago that we can do all these little activities and get more out of these kids than than right. just saying little Johnny go do this or go do that. And you know, I, I think that's. You had kind to of prove, how all that stems. You had to prove your worth. For sure. And you had to put some skin into the game to right. be part of the game. And, and if you don't want to put the skin into the game, then we don't want you around here. Yeah, and that's what they do. And nowadays, right. it's just, well, let's just make a fraternity, or let's do right. this because they don't want to do the hardships. No. Well, I, mean, I mean, we kicked, we, when I was a senior, we kicked two or three kids out that, you know, were just, it was constant problems. Yeah. It, it, every day. You got to. It was something new. Not just assholes or what? Oh, just spoiled city kids oh. and, you know, disrespecting women, right. you know, doing this, disrespecting older people in the fraternity. But you've got to you've got to learn your place and get along with everybody. And and those kids have never had to do that or have been expected to do that. No. Yeah. We'll take a random. I'm just going to use the five SIGs at the University of Kentucky. I don't know if fucking right. soul goes to the University <laughs> of Kentucky and I don't know a five SIG there. So I, this is right. random as you can get. If you went to the five SIG fraternity at University of Kentucky in 1965, and you went to there in 1985, the guys are doing through the same steps and the same shit to get to where they're at. Correct. Times have changed, but the fraternity was close to the same. Right. Same hazing, same party, mm-hmm. same good time for 20 years. Now it's 2023 you do that, and it's completely fucking different because of what you yeah. said. We haven't changed. The systems have changed to make us weaker than we are. And well, it's all and, society. And, and, and that's like the nationals. I mean, the SAE nationals. They Texas got kicked off several years ago, and it was because some – unhappy dad that you know they supposedly mistreated little johnny well he came in wrote this big complaint and kicked the the sae chapter off the university of texas campus and you know they're back they're back on campus now everything's going good but it's just a different society so that was i mean a, it, a spoiled little johnny that got his feelings hurt yeah and, and honest i think that i don't even think it was a dad honestly i think he was like some consultant that was like overseeing the well-being of the fraternity right. and maybe the finances or whatever but like i don't know what you know he was my brother was involved at the time and i don't know he uh but he filed a complaint to nationals and nationals came in and kicked the chapter off the university of texas can you imagine campus. your kid being such a pussy that he comes <laughs> home dad uh, mean to me they, they, they were mean to me in fraternity God damn! I'm writing him a letter, and we're gonna get him kicked off. And that's Strongly where shit goes. Right. Letter. I mean, it just, I just, but that's the pussies that we we're raising today. This woke society. Well, that's that's the deal. You know, all these kids want to sign up and do it, but then they get in the middle of it. And it's like a job. I mean, you know, you sign up for a job, you're expected right. to go to work every day, good, bad, or ugly, and do your job. And you can't call your parents and say, "Well, my boss was mean to me today. I, I think I'm gonna quit." But that's. That's where we're at in society. These people, they're like you said. There's a, there's a lot of quit to them. Yeah, and the kids want to see struggle. Go to that. Go to the the uh, the dorm rooms, the cheap dorm rooms, and right. look at that kid that, who comes having, from shit that's paying for himself. himself and, to, and, and that's the thing. And he's eating ramen noodles every day, or he's Correct. got to get a lunch card, and he is. And when that school closes for Christmas break, he ain't got nowhere to stay because they make him leave the dorm rooms. Correct. And he don't have nowhere to go because he has a family that's a shithole, and life's a whole lot better. Right. And that's that's but, the but kid you, that's you, struggling. Yeah, but you got to appreciate that kid. Yes. Oh yeah, because yeah. he's gonna make something right. himself. Right. You, you, know? you put you put him in the workplace. There's nothing entitled about it. He's no. gonna work for everything yeah. that he's worth. It's like Deion Sanders she. talked about the defensive lineman. That's the kid you want. That's hungry. That wants to work for something. You bet. The most miserable kid I've ever kids I've ever seen in my life have been there two times. Has been the kids on Harvard University. Those kids, you would think, have the world by the balls. They are at a university. Their parents are paying $100,000 a year for them to go to school. They're all right. wealthy, wealthy kids. They come from these blue bud families. Well, yeah. You walk through that campus, those kids look fucking miserable. Every one of them. <clears throat> they look unhappy. It's because yeah. they know that they're not ever going to do what their parents did. They, they know that they're never going to achieve 
the greatness that their parents achieved to send them to a college like that. Or their, their parents them. come to, or they're because their grandparents or great grandparents. Right. Because a lot of those kids are just trust fund kids. Crying Nothing wrong right. against that. I wish I was a trust fund kid. I'm telling you right now. I don't now. think that you do. Oh, fuck that. I do. Yeah, I do too. No, because we all have a sense of purpose in what we do. A lot of those kids that have just had everything handed to them without having to work for anything, fucking miserable. They've got no direction in life. They have no hunger. They have no desire. Um, and you know, you know, we know firsthand that, but these kids, they don't have any purpose and they don't have any direction and they're lost in this world. They're just, they're trying to find, they know that their parents and their grandparents achieve these great things and they're at the, they're at Harvard and they're thinking, how the fuck am I going to make them happy? Yeah. You're not going to. I thought they were unhappy because I looked at all the girls walking around Harvard. I bet they aren't the same as the University of Texas. No, 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 not even close. Let me tell you something. The best looking women I heard at Harvard were all the, I don't know if you, are you like to say Oriental or you have to say Asian? I don't know which uh, word I can't say one. no more. It's all good. Yeah, we, know, we know what I understand, about. but for some reason, that's an Oriental. You can go to Oriental restaurant, but you can't say Oriental, I guess, anymore. But you can say Asian, right? I guess. Go ahead. Well, which one's the right word? I, you don't know. We're either. in uncharted waters. Okay. Just go west a long way. Yeah. <laughs> east. Ocean. Or east. East. Either yeah. way. Either way. <laughs> those are the, get those there. are the prettiest women at Harvard. There was lots no. of them. But that's. And they don't like the, They don't like people from there at Harvard for some reason. Their standards. They try to get rid of the people because they're smarter and they're hard workers. It makes the other kids look bad. But I'm 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 serious though. The, the at Harvard when you walked around, boy, there was not much. There wasn't much eye candy there. Like if you go to Tech. Texas oh, Tech's tech. got tons of beautiful Tech. women. Oh, yeah. I mean, you go there. I'm to Plus, Midwestern I mean, and Wichita had good luck. Vernon Junior College has got better looking women than Harvard does. I'm telling you, Harvard, I didn't see any. Someone's going to say, my aunt grew up there and she's a good looking lady. I'm sure that there's one or sure. two that are. But by God, beer goggles are needed at Harvard. And I don't you. know a whole lot about the history of Harvard, but I have a feeling that your GPA probably matters there. I would think. And if you're just yeah. off there fucking around like you are up at Texas Tech, <laughs> or you, that's another reason they're miserable. They're like, I got to keep this fucking 4.0. No, they're going to kick me out of the, here. The, those kids don't get kicked out. Their parents buy them in. A lot of those kids are bought in. That that's why they Either don't way, like they're the, expected the, to perform. They don't like the Eastern kids because or the, I must say it, fucking Asian kids. They don't like the Asian kids. I don't know if that's the right word or not because My those God. kids all are smart and they make they they, they want the, right. they don't want them there because it right. makes the other kids look bad. It ruins the curve on all the tests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hong Su over there made a fucking yeah. hundred. I made, I made yeah. a sixty-five on the test. Yeah. I always hated that kid. Yeah. 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 I, that fucker. motherfucker yeah. there is going to yeah. fuck yeah. it all up for the rest of us. There were three of them that made hundred, yeah. so there's quit no thinking curve. About, quit thinking yeah. about yourself. Think about yeah. this in the back. One of them motherfuckers might cure cancer, but fuck him, <laughs> you know? Throw a question or two our way. I think yeah. Kai Brandon and I had a plot to kill everybody and fuck that curve up in the school. So... You you've had a good life then, Wade. Uh, I've had Jesus a great Christ, life. Jesus Christ, Jeff, I, he's in his twenties. You killing him off? I said he's had a great life, and no, I didn't say it, it's over. No, he's had a great life. So well, Wade, no, we love you. But yeah. you great run, banging supermodels, making fun of people from Harvard, <laughs> threatening Swahili kids with a fucking Benjamin air rifle, and coming home no, and hanging out with Tiny at his house in fucking Albany, Texas. What a life! No, and, it stood and me up on a two, turkey hunt one time and shooting two hundred class deer. He did what to you? Stood me up on a turkey hunt this year. No, when he's in UT. Oh, turkey well, hunt or deer hunt? Bucky, we don't need to go there. No, what, we were deer hunting. That's right. What do you yeah. do? Forget to show up? Fuck yeah. No, somebody drove wrong way down a one way street twice. The cops finally took him to jail. Oh, well, you got arrested? Wade Montgomery. Was that against the rules of the. Um, <laughs> that, was, that, that was frowned upon. That was the minor part. Did of you it. get a D wobbly? Possibly. Possibly. Ooh, that's not, not good. A, not I can't a believe a friend would even bring that up. I know. I thought he was going to be kind. <laughs> that's to me tough today. on no insurance. <laughs> You no, to, Bucky. I yeah, can bring I, up some did other your shit. mom? Did your mom cry and cuss at you then too? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I would have paid. Sir. I Bad. guarantee you. I would have. I would have put my ranch on the line to be a fly on the wall to listen to the conversation him and his dad had. Oh, it was bad. Did, did it you was tell your mom? Or did your dad tell your mom? No, I t I told her that she needed to tell my dad. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "No, you need to go ahead and no pick shit. up the phone so and you, call him." You called your mom. She get you out of jail? No, I waited and I was supposed to be at the nail at twelve o'clock. That next day, well, I kind I, I tried to pawn it off on my parents. I was gonna, I finished. Oh, it's your parents' <laughs> fault. You got a DWI. I was, I was planning to, so I, I finished finals and I was gonna drive back to Albany that night. And called them. I said finals went well. They said, hey, we'll go out with all your friends, have a big time. So we, I think your time. idea of a big time and theirs are completely different. <clears throat> we had a big time, and I was talking to a little freshman girl at the time, and. She called me at like two a.m. and was like, "I can't, ca I can't find a ride. I can't find a ride. I can't catch a cab." I was like, "All right, I'll be there here in a minute." Well, you're being a gentleman. 
yeah so that all happened and so i called my dad the next day or well, i caught i got out at like noon the following day and uh hold on called called my mom hold on. and then i called bucky bucky's waiting Okay, Buck. Tell him the part about how you went down the one-way street the wrong way, and the cop flipped his lights at you, and you thought, "What the hell is that son of a bitch doing?" Yeah. So you well, made no, the walk and did it again. No, <laughs> <laughs> no if we're gonna he tried you. to give you a fucking break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wonder what he's doing over there. <laughs> Poor Wade. <laughs> Well, it was just the way we always walked down there. I didn't realize it was a one-way northbound street. <laughs> and you were going south? And she said she was on that street corner down there where we all... I don't remember what the, the side street was, but yeah, I, I hooked me a ride on 6th Street, and they flashed their lights at me, and I thought, that's kind of strange. <laughs> see didn't, he, didn't see the girls, and so I made the block again, and the second time... Did they, it again. They fired them up, Jesus and boy, here Christ. they come, so... Being a good driver, I just pulled over to the side of the road to let them pass, and they whipped in behind me. <laughs> and then you thought, oh, fuck. <laughs> They're oh, here yeah. for me. <laughs> and then I had a deer skull in the back of my pickup that I'd found somewhere out on the ranch, and they accused me of being a poacher, so they trashed my pickup. And so It was a bad deal. They were not, did, you, did, you have to, did you do the blow? I refuse that. And Bingo, so, good for you. Well, yeah, then they got the warrant to take blood in jail. Oh, so you did a blood test? Uh, yeah. Deal? Yeah. And well, I bet that no. doesn't take very long in Austin, Texas. It's not like you get arrested out here and it's no. ca- you got to send all no, that shit it, off. It, it and... was it was the real deal. Did so. you get this expunged? No. no. Oof. You're a sorry no. friend. Bring that one up then. He ain't able to get some he, other stuff. He ain't gonna get a real job now. I could bring some Poor stuff guy. up in this last six uh-huh. months. Have Bucky, you, have you had an answer <laughs> to this ever else besides your parents? Yeah, no. I mean, my. I, yeah, I mean, people know about it. It's funny and, looking and, back and, now. And, I mean, I'm not ashamed of it. It's something that you, I mean. You ain't I, the only I, person I, that's had a DWI. No, no. The only it, person in this room, but you're the only But, it, but you're, <laughs> the, you're the only one that's in this room that's gotten caught. But, I mean, correct. Even no, me, and, who's and, drove and, drunk less than anybody in here, I bet, should have been busted a couple of times. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and the thing is, you know, it's just a, it's a lesson to learn going forward that, um, it's not something to be joked around about, and I mean, there's people that die. There was a mm-hmm. there was a little girl in Albany this this past week, and was in a, a bad crash over in Abilene. Oh and, yeah, gosh. Dang. I mean, she's hospitalized and alcohol they're, they're drinking all, and driving no, is a serious it, it's, fucking this guy, deal. It's not. It's, this guy had seven people in his car, <laughs> and he was driving down the inter- like the loop in Abilene, trying to touch an eighteen wheeler going down the road. No, oh, what a whip whipped around in front it in front of it. Hit the Fuck. guardrail, ejected a bunch of people. I mean, is this an no, Albany deal? No, it was one girl from Albany that was in Abilene. There is, yeah. I don't know who any of the people. So were. just some college but, kids. But there? she's in bad, no, bad shape. No, they're all like high school kids. Oh, it's, it's terrible. So. Mm. They're they're graduated, right? Uh, I get. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, but, but, I mean young, eight, young. Eight, eighteen. Yeah, yeah, nineteen. I was old, I was yeah. going from the stockyards one night back to uh, my buddy lived on Brentwood's. Chase stairway chase or whatever it is right there mm-hmm. where the big specs liquor store yeah. is. And we were going back from the stockyards. It was late, probably two o'clock in the morning. And he'd met two, two girls from the stockyards and we're behind them and something. And he's like riding in between the car. And I'll never forget this. He grabbed the steering wheel and yanked it on that girl. And that fucking car went right, left, right, left. I don't know how it didn't fucking roll. Did about three donuts and I 30 and they just yeah. kept on driving, pulled in. They were just laughing and shit. Gosh, man. No seatbelt or nothing. And I and I thought, man, that, that, they don't realize how close they were to dying. We've all I mean, done it. Or having a bad, bad, bad wreck. Right. Anyways, and we've and all just, done it, but I've never done stupid shit like that. Now, this that. was fucking stupid. I I got out and he was <laughs> laughing. I got the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen in my I life. I did hit a road sign one time going about 30 and it went through my front windshield. But Brand, were, you, were you doing it like were you trying to knock him over? Oh, we, we used yeah. to do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> if we're going to bring him up, let's, let's go ahead and bring him up. <laughs> Yeah, Bucky gets a new pickup the week before. About five days. I don't even. <laughs> no, we I think it was like three days. We were at the ice house and we decided we were going to go to Woodson, the beer store, and hang out. Mm-hmm. It's like 10 o'clock already. Hang out in Woodson, Texas. <laughs> that's a beer. That's county, a little, county line. You need to go over town. there, Jeff. Just you just like hang that. out. Beer joint. Yeah. I've you, been there. I've been by it 100 times. You so, can buy, buy a case of beer and sit there at the bar and drink it. Oh, yeah. Or they'll serve a you singles. A case of beer. <laughs> Damn. Who the hell can drink a case of beer and drive home? Well, there's people over there that can, I promise you. I can't. I can't. <laughs> no, so we turned on 209 there to go to Woodson, and 
I was just being a goofy ass and like I just turned on that farm market road and there was a road sign fifty yards up there, so I just thought I'd hit it. Well, I hit it running about thirty. Well, that's mm-hmm. right when the new breakaway signs come out. Oh, right. It boom shot it out in front of me and it's just doing flips and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and it slaps my hood, hits my windshield, bust it. The bolts on the back of that sign go through the top of my cab. Then it rips my tailgate off going out the back. Holy shit. How old were you? 20. Old enough to know better. It was before Lacey, and I met Lacey when I was You're 20, 28. You were 25. Probably 25. Fuck. Yeah. You're way yeah. too smart for that shit. So we get out, and we look at it, and we're like, gosh, damn. I was pissed off now. Hey, like, your new pickup. Yeah. Fucked. Yeah, so we go on. We're heading down the road. About the time all these deer come across the road, and one, boom, runs into my door and just fucking... <laughs> Craters my door, <laughs> craters my injury. bed. Well, the insurance is now got a claim now. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a hell of a new flatbed out of the deal. So we go to the beer, beer. store, and I sit over in the corner the by myself, store. drink beer, and I was pissed off, you know. So we're on the way home. We take the county roads all the way back to the house. We come over the old May- Mayflower Hill, headed down to the river, and there's a deer standing there, there's a buck standing in the county road, and I just smoke it. I just punched it. And I was like, "Fuck it!" I got Hit nothing. him. He comes up, hits the top of the damn windshield, and I was just like. What more could have this pickup well, look like? This poor it's, pickup, it, five it fucking days, three days. Yeah, if I mean, it looks like I went through days. a tornado. <laughs> What'd your insurance salesman say? I mean, no, well, there. you got to tell the story you told your dad, Bucky. What did I? Why I mean, are you telling your dad? You're a grown man. <laughs> he paid for my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to tell your dad. I understand. He, he, he said that he <laughs> swerved to miss a deer, hit a road sign, and then hit another deer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I made a good one up. <laughs> your dad doofs all right through your bullshit, probably. No, well, if he did, he didn't say nothing. <laughs> he did. We showed up to Bucky's that next day, and we are like... I had duct tape on my hood. No, the no, my bullshit. At first, you didn't. And when we leave here, it. remind me, I got to go sign the insurance to Michelle's toe. Right. It rained. When it and rained, and it he, rained in the he cab. Had, he had two holes, <laughs> two water spots on the... So your, your DWI story, is, you know, it's bad, but... We know somebody, I'm not going to say male or female, they were going, they had just left Colorado. Weed is legal in Colorado, so they bought a supply. <laughs> we've got a, group, we've got a group of kids, prominent kids from Albany, that this same thing probably happened right. to them. No, there's no way. And this, so, kid, this, this person is smart, way yeah. too smart to be this fucking stupid. So he is... Uh, we've established it's a guy now. Middle of the night, Louisiana, and above... <laughs> The, the little the little ticker on the side of the road says <laughs> drug checkpoint three miles ahead drug enforcement checkpoint so he fucking takes the exit he the next exit that he sees <laughs> and the cops are at the bottom of that exit there was no drug checkpoint three miles ahead they were at the very next exit where he pulled off he was going to take some side roads and you know get back up on the interstate so he pulls off real quick and they fucking light him up Woo, woo, woo. So he's like, what the fuck am I going to do? So he hurries up and he has his dog with him. He's like, I'll, I'll just say that I'm airing my dog. They'll leave me alone. And they did not leave him alone. So <laughs> do you have anything you shouldn't have in here? Yes, yes sir, sir, I do. <laughs> he just fucking came clean right away. <laughs> do you have any, you have anything in here you're not supposed to? Yes, sir. I, I definitely do. <laughs> so they got him for everything. Uh, I mean, he if- had, he had, you know, Vapes and gummies and joints. I mean, he he fucking doesn't live in a state where it's legal. So, you know, it's funny about the whole thing is, is if a cop tells you, especially if you have fentanyl or methamphetamines, heroin or cocaine, and he says, if you just tell me the truth, I'll take it easy easy on on you. Yeah, he's lying to you because he's not going to tell you. You're going to jail. You might as well let them find it themselves. The only time I I tell the truth is when a cop pulls me over, and the first thing I say is. Pistol in that glove box right there. Right. Just let you know it's there. Yeah. You keep it in there, and I'll keep mine on my I'll side. Keep, I'll keep good. mine where it is. But, you keep, but, but he did. If, he fucking, that poor kid. If you have some beers. He even told, the cops told him, too, like, man, you're not usually who we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. But if you but if you have a beer, and you tell a cop you've had a beer, if you're honest, he may let you have somebody come pick you up if right. he thinks you can't yeah, drive. For sure. Or he may let you go if he thinks you're sober enough. But if you got a little bit of methamphetamines on you, you're going Ooh. to jail. I've never ever seen a cop say, you know what? We'll just stomp this in the ground right here. They're it's taking you to jail. It's yeah. just a little meth, yeah. you know. Unless you're a confidential informant, then you maybe get a chance. Mm-hmm. Is that a, no names local guy? Or? No, I'll tell you off air. You know him. <coughs> yeah, oh, you I know do him. know him. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 
So we were talking about insurance claims. Blake just got this pickup. He sold this pickup now. So we've got where our septic system goes to. There's a big hole. And he's been out here for fucking eight years. That front wheel looks a little yeah. buried. The door doesn't look like it opens very good. Yeah, look at his big ass crawling in there. <laughs> we had to pull his big ass out of there. Oh, that running board's on the ground. But he was like, who the fuck put this hole here? Like, Blake. <laughs> It's been there for fuck. It's been there forever. So it's been there since shit. the lodge. Damn. That's, oh, shit. that's what he drove into. Is he set, is he stepping in septic water right now? Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. Actually, I think that's just gray water. Yeah. That, that, that's that's just that's water. just from the uh, ladder line. Let, let me tell you another or, story about uh, Blake. Washing machine. Blake's oh. pickup before that he got brand new, brand spanking new. Mikey Soberano. Oh, I love this story. Takes a dog. It's this one. It's that pickup. It's that pickup right there and grabs a dog and fuck it. Does he throw it over the back of the truck? What's he do? No, he tries to throw it over the side. Blake yeah. Blake is in the process of lowering the tailgate so that Mikey can put the dog in where the tail. Mikey just fucking throws it and that dog like, you know how dogs do when you pick oh, yeah. them up? Yeah. They're just fucking legs everywhere. <laughs> Scratch, just fucking scrapes all down the side and Blake's like, what are you doing? Mikey's like, ah. Got him in the bed of the pickup, didn't I? What are you talking about? Damn. What am I doing? I'm loading my dog up, dickhead. But that fucking pickup had more shit to it. And he only had it, I think, a year, year and a half. But that's just, that's that's Blake in a nutshell. What did the cop tell you about giving you the, the lights the first time? Yeah, did, he, did he bring that up to you? Oh, yeah. He said, well, we flashed our lights out to you the first time. You you were adamant about doing it. Yeah, he goes, you're going the wrong way down a one-way street. And I said, yeah, yes, sir. I, I guess, guess I was. I guess I am. What, how so. was your conversation with your dad? How did that go? Uh, were you scared to tell lots, your dad? Lots of fuck words. Uh, <laughs> Are you of, fucking stupid? Was that one of the things he said? Numerous times. How yeah. many times did he hang up and call you back? He hung up on me about that's bad seven times in a matter of three minutes. That, oh. When you're a dad and you do that, you're fucking pissed and you hang up. And you're like, motherfucker, I gotta tell him something else. Are you fucking stupid? Hang up again. Are you fucking stupid? Oh yeah. Sell your pickup. And buy you a bus ticket and don't come home. <laughs> don't come home. <laughs> Were you already on the way home? I don't care. No, I had to call my brother to go get my truck out of the impound. It was it was a bad deal. He called me and I was like, well, we're we gonna go hunting in the morning. <laughs> I said, Bucky, you're probably not going to see me this Christmas break. <laughs> I can't go to Albany. How long did it take for your dad? Really, was was it, time you got home? Was he okay? No, fish shit, no. <laughs> so this, this. I, I pulled up at my parent. Of course, my mom's crying. I was I was upset. And, it's like you murdered somebody. And Good my, my dad, I'll never forget. He had a damn zebra pillow. He said, "We're sitting in my parents' living room, and we're getting the whole come to Jesus meeting." And he has this zebra pillow, and I'm talking. And he's a big guy, and he is huge white knuckled he's got hands on him like a gorilla and he is just squeezing the goods out of this zebra pillow and i was like i just hope i make it till the morning <laughs> i mean he's like six five two eighty so you weren't talking back to him no it was yes or no sir yes. i'm sorry i'm sorry right, you're gonna pay for this well, shit yeah. no I... did he how long did it take before then he was trying to get you an attorney to help you oh that was all on me and we we got, I got a guy down there in Austin, and he's a super nice guy. But he was like, they got the video back from the cop car, and he goes, "You're fucked. You're gonna need some popcorn for this one." <laughs> some <laughs> popcorn? Yeah, I said I don't really care to see it. Oh, 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 oh on, yeah, see. on the sobriety. Did test. you ever watch it? No, never. never? Did. You know well, what? Your... I, I I said, do I need to watch it? He goes, if you don't want to, he said, I probably wouldn't. I said, I'm good. Wow, I'll, I'll, I'll take your I'll, word for I'll it. I'll take your word. For You've it. seen enough of these to know when this bad. Yeah. My mom raised one son that went to jail a couple times, and then she raised me. Tony got a, Tony got a boating while intoxicated. That's worse than hey, driving, right? Have y'all watched the Murdoch mystery? Or no, the, no, I didn't watch you that. No, you, we'll you go need, to that though. You need, you Lacey, know, we can bring it's that on up. Netflix, right? Yes, Lacey's we'll, watching that right we'll now. bring it up. We'll bring it up. Yes. Go ahead and tell Tony's. Yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony was at PK with Chance, his husband. Yeah, and a bunch of them. And Tony's on a jet ski, and he's riding a jet ski. And that that day, Tony left like at one o'clock from our house in Wichita. And I told him, I said, uh, he said, I'm going to go to PK. Are you coming down there tonight or tomorrow? Because we had a bunch of friends down there. It was on the fourth weekend. I said, no. I'm going to stay in Wichita tonight. I Fourth said, weekend's bad news and, over there. And he goes, all right. I said, don't do something stupid and get thrown in fucking jail. I'm fixing to go out to Cheyenne Cattle Company. It's about 930 at night, and the phone rings. Before cell phones, believe it or not, people actually had house phones. And I answered the phone. It's Tony said, hey, uh, I need you to come get me tomorrow. You're dad. 
I go, where are you at? He goes, Palo Pena County Jail. Oh, I go, shit. I go, who'd you get in a fight with? Because I've already gotten a fight. He goes, uh, I got a Bodie while intoxicated. I said, you don't sound drunk to me. He said, I'm not drunk. Anyway, was late he, was, night. he was on. No, this this is at night. He just been. I'd seen him at one thirty, and this is eight hours later. Oh, but anyway, he was on a jet ski, and he said I'd had two beers. And he said me and this girl on this jet ski, and they'd make me go over to the to the dock. And he said I tripped on a fucking rock doing the deal. Mm-hmm. They took him to fucking Cuffed jail. To his ass. And um, <laughs> so me and Dad went down. Dad was the fireman. Dad got off fire department. That I called Dad at the fire station. I said, Hey, your, <laughs> your son's in jail. I said we got to go pick him up tomorrow at Palo Pinto. Ah, fucking Tony. God damn it. Rah, 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 rah. So we go to pick him up. Tony walks out of the fucking jail wearing fucking. Uh, Swimsuit and carrying a life jacket. That's what he did. That, that was his that, ball. That was it. He said he froze his ass off. And Joey said, I asked for one of those orange convict <laughs> suits. He said, I was colder I need, shit. I needed some help. And he said, <laughs> he said, I had to pee so bad all night, but I didn't want to pee in front of all them fucking people. He said, I had to piss so bad. But anyways, he uh he ended up getting it beat. He he got it. They let him out, out without any bond. Right. And he got out and uh they, they, they dropped the charges on him. The they didn't charges. fucking drop it too much because the first year that I was trying to get smuggled into Canada for, without having a guide license. It come up there on his record? Yeah. They said. Because like you. Oh, that wasn't the only time. He's been in jail for fighting a couple of times. Too. You right. uh, like any any alcohol related offenses and they 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 put you through the ringer a little bit. And they said, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Stanfield, have you ever do you like driving a boat while you're drunk? And he's like. That was a long time. How do you ago. know about that bitch? <laughs> and they're like, "Well, it says it right here, 1994 or two or whatever." Oh, and damn. he's like, "That was supposed to have been expunged from my record." And they're like, "Still right here, right there, Mister Stanfield." It, it's on your record, and you know? <clears throat> it's going to be on your record. He right. got arrested for it, but he did not get convicted of it. Yeah, that's what. And then, then like Tony, he's not a he's not a smooth talker. Would you say? I'd say that's very <laughs> that's a, a very big understatement. So like when they. <laughs> You know, they kind of caught him flat footed, right. backed him up a little bit, and he's stumbling and stuttering. And well, uh, the, 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 I was like, I'm never getting to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, we're out of luck. I'm done. But it, it was still on there. So the murder, mis- oh, you got to get out. You yeah. go pee. Um, T- Tony called me one other time. He's in jail. And he, he called, I answered the phone. He goes, I t- promise you're the last fucking person I want to have to call, but I need somebody to come get me out of jail. I go, what, what What happened? I got in a fight last night. And he said, I, I wasn't even fighting. He goes, I'd gotten in a fight earlier in the night. I was just there <laughs> breaking a fight up, and I got arrested for it. But That's the worst when you get in trouble when the, you weren't even fighting. You're no, he'd been, he had been in one earlier that night, though. But he said they were in a parking lot, and he said some guys wanted to pull over and stuff. And he said, my fuckers got out with bats and shit. And he said, fuck, I wasn't going to fight a bunch, a bunch of Mexican guys. because I ain't going to fight a bunch of Mexican guys with bats. He said, me and is him and just another guy. This other guy's a real prominent insurance agent in our hometown, so I'm not going to use his name. But he said, Tony said, he took off, and we were going through there. And he said, it's a dead end. You got to go down one end of the parking lot and come up. And he said, these Mexican guys got bats and shit out. And Tony said, fuck, I look around. All we got is Coors Light. Tony said, <laughs> I was throwing Coors Lights at. He goes, you hit a dude in the chest at 50 miles an hour with a whole full Coors Light that hadn't been opened up yet? He goes, they drop like rocks. <laughs> oh, that's right. Gosh, damn. He said, I hit one of them some bitches right in the oh. fucking chest. He said, some bitches rolled back over. Plum, plum. You could fucking cut them up worse with like, if, if that can is you didn't tipping. You between the eyes? Yeah. Like if that can is to. tipping. <laughs> Like, if that catches you between the eyes? Oh. Ooh. He oh said that, didn't he? said, it made an ugly sound when it hit that fucker in the Bull, chest. I can't imagine. <laughs> I was, we, uh, Jesse and I, we watch uh, the challenge on MTV. It's smut TV, but it's kind of like mix a survivor, and then they throw some shit. Uh, um, you know, they sh- they'll they test your endurance and shit like it's that. It's like recent? Yeah. So um, there's a girl on there. can't remember her name right now. But... So basically, they uh, they were like shooting, like a slingshot kinda, and they're supposed to be knocking these targets down. And this girl, she didn't get her, uh, she didn't get the pebble or whatever that uh, golf ball, I think is what it is. She didn't get the golf ball seated in there properly. Oh shit, motherfucker! <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> So like that's what they were. Oh, oh those are da- those kind of slingshots are dangerous too. It's gonna make me watch this fucking video again. Um, but she doesn't get the the golf ball seated into the the launcher thing properly. It rolled out, and it fucking it somehow or another. It uh, 
Let's see if I can get it here. Jesus Christ, YouTube and their fucking commercials. Three, two, one. Um. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I think you're going the wrong way now. No, maybe I am. Yeah, right there. Maybe. It's back. Yeah, I think there it is. So they're having a hard time hitting this thing. And then, oh, that's our partner. This one? Maybe? You watch this, not us. Well, I don't know where the fuck it is in this 10-minute video. She doesn't have a scar on her nose. I don't know if that's her. (laughs) Oh, no, she did. Like, that's just a lot of concealer and shit. There it is, is. right there. She's got it teed up, and you can see it's kind of fucked up. Look at the blood, blood drops, Fucking gosh. Immediately. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Horatio there. Yeah. He's not a frat daddy. But gosh, the, the cha- so the, the challenge the event before she had slashed her finger on uh you can see she's got a bandage on her right hand. It's time for you to go home. <clears throat> she had slashed her finger, so she was kind of grabbing it fucked up. Wait, that's a kind of girl Horatio that would have called mm. you on that BB gun. So it hit one of the flap. Uprights that's holding the bungees. I don't oh. know what it did, but it <laughs> fucked her. She broke five bones in her face. Ouch. Nose Ouch. nose was dislocated. She broke five, so she broke her orbital bone then. She broke like she broke the bones up here. She broke uh like this bone here. She broke yeah, I think both sides of her, her eyes. I bet I mean, she had a black eye the next day. Oh my her god. Her blood's a little thin. Ugh. Damn. Um <laughs> I never broke my nose, but another guy did one time. Broke your nose? Mm-hmm. I've never Broke your nose? Yeah. You getting a bar fight? No, I was just minding my own business sitting on the counter. That's what it. usually happens. That's how it usually happens. I right? was just, my buddy of mine was messing with this guy's girlfriend. And he thought it, they told him it was me, and he just walked up and punched me. No shit. And I had a guy punch me one time. He hit me in the back of the head. My back I of turned my head, my head about the time he swung. Fucker hit me in the back of the head about broke his fucking hand. I thought I broke my nose playing football one time. My chin I made it one of the few times. I was an offensive guy, not a defensive guy. One of the few tackles that I had to make, and my chin strap busted loose, and that face mask the top of it Uh and like raked all down here and i just knew that i was going to touch it and it was going to be a little sideways a little mushy did you punch you punch it it hurt shit no (laughs) fucking cuckoo my my dad i was with him one time and this guy walked in the store he had a black eye that said god damn you don't know the difference between shut up and sit down do you (laughs) i was like what that guy's a home Somebody told you to fucking sit down. You thought they said, no, no, stand up or stand sit down. Stand, stand up or sit down. down. What did what did Ron have to say about whenever Tony, like, did, was he like Wade's dad and kind of held a grudge? No, because it was a different time back then. About Tony getting the BWI? Yeah. He was concerned Tony was going to fuck himself out of getting, you know, hurting later on down in life, getting a job. Because oh, yeah. right. that time it was hard to get a DWI. It wasn't as easy as it, it is now. It was hard to do it. You yeah. had to work you know, at you had to it. really fuck up to do it then. And then, but Tony got out. Uh, I think my mom, one time, we had to go to the emergency room. I got called to the emergency room. I was at Toby's one night, and a girl come in. She's like, hey, your brother's the ER. He said, you need to go down there. I go, what happened? She goes, he, he'd been playing rugby, and they'd been playing at SMU rugby, and he had uh, tore his shoulder up or something. There and she I, was the day oh, after. Oh, God damn. Son of a. Wow. And anyways, I go in there, and um, my mom comes in the emergency room. Tony's 22 years old. I'm 24 at this time. My mom walks in the emergency room, and she's got a fucking attitude. And she's a little Italian lady, and she is fucking hot. She's chewing on Tony's ass. She starts chewing on my ass. I'm like, why are you chewing on my ass for? I didn't do a fucking thing. By God, this drinking and fighting and stuff, you're just like your dad. Blah, 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 blah. She goes in. My fucking four dad walks in. He's at the fire department. got his uniform on. He's like, what the fuck did I do? You know, she goes, second time, Tony got hit in the face with a baseball bat about a week or two before. Before that oh shit and um he still got a big old scar he was at a frat party one night and some fucking dude hit him with a fucking baseball bat tony beat the fuck out of that old boy he hit him with a spare tire tony he? picked a spare tire up out of a truck and beat this guy through it and hit this guy in the back of the head with that son of a bitch when the guy was running from him Tony was strong then but anyways my tony mom was tough, wasn't yeah it? and my mom she is just on my just on my ass and this little girl's with tony she starts chewing on her ass about tony acting this way I'm like fuck this don't call mom next time you get fucking hurt no kidding was the last fucking person call she had no sense of humor about that shit. My yeah. dad didn't. My dad, did, my dad fought and drank his whole time growing up, so it wasn't that big a deal to him. Your dad was a big guy, wasn't he? Big, big man. I never got to meet six, him. Six. He was not as big as what he said. Six two, two hundred and thirty five pounds. My dad had a full ride in Nebraska, played defense tackle. I mean, he was a big man, yes, sir. especially back in them times. Right. Big old hands on him and yes, stuff. Sir. But my my um my mother's a little Italian lady, 
five foot five, weighs 120 pounds. And she didn't have a lot of, she was not real impressed with my dad by this time in his life. And she was not impressed with her sons at this time. Not as near as impressed when she found out Tony was getting married in a gay marriage. You know, she was not excited about that. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, she, uh, no, she was not happy. About but my dad never really said much about Tony getting in. I mean, he would be mad and disappointed about shit. But I remember riding with my dad a few times where he got lost his temper with some people. And he was not one to back down from a confrontation. My dad never did that in front of us. He did it, I think, once or twice with me in the pickup. But he, my dad's a big mean son gun, but he he was always pretty. And like fighting growing up, if you got in a fight, you better pray that you won. Because if you lost, you're going to get your ass beat at house. Really? My dad wasn't like that. Dad, my dad was just not one to ever back down from anything. Because he didn't want you fighting by yeah. any means. You right. know, he wanted you to stand up for yourself. But try your best not to get in a fight. And if you did get in a fight, you better just finish it. But my my dad was a big, strong guy. He fought a lot growing up. But you think, like I said, life, life was different in the '60s and the '80s compared to today. You didn't yeah. have lawsuits. You don't worry about somebody stabbing yeah. you and shit. Well, nowadays you don't know who's got a gun. <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm scared about. I'm going to my my kids. Like we're going to start doing jujitsu again because I want yeah. them. I don't want them to be hooligans, but I also don't want them to be victims. Well, defend their defensive. Right. Yeah. Like I've seen so many Twitter. I don't know what video I watched, but my Twitter lately has just been like little kids in bathrooms getting picked on by like a big bully. Like there's one video. She's fucking. Well, I think what it was, was it, I watched the video of the teacher that got the shit beat out of her. Yeah, Did you see that, that by like yeah. a 17 year old giant. So now I'm getting high school fight videos somehow. And it's just like, God damn, man. I would hate for my kid to be the little guy that doesn't know how to at least put defend himself. But there's a video, a guy, he's, fuck, he's twice the size of the kid, takes the kid and, like, uses the kid's head as, like, a battering ram into, like, a cinder block wall. And then, like, the kid, you know, the kid's fucking hurting, and then they kick him in the face. I'm just like, God damn, that's, that, that stuff that's breaks the my stuff heart. That's the stuff right there. Someone he's walking there with a the two-by-four yep. and beat them fuckers yep. to death. I, I don't really always... have no sympathy for that shit at all. Yeah. If you want to you wanna pick on people that can't take up for themselves, fuck you. You deserve everything you get. And then they need to go home to his parents and beat the fuck out of the parents, too, for that shit. Well, Wait. but then that kid that got beat up is going to live with that yeah. and, and be picked on yeah. going forward. Yeah, because now mean, everything's it, it, on video. It, like, you can't just get your ass beat and move yeah. on anymore. Yeah. I Everybody hated, sees it. hated bullies growing up yeah. and one of my very best friends to this day was kind of that way he mainly picked on his crowd that he ran with there right. was always one or two you know and i remember when i was a senior and he was a freshman and he could have beat me black and blue because this so much is he's, he was, he's a tough guy trey davis <laughs> yeah but i walked up him poked him in the chest one day because he was picking on this poor kid bradford and i was sick of it bradford's the nicest little kid in the world and i was like i can't take him no more and i told him i said you breaking may, my heart i said you may beat my ass but i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not scared of you <laughs> we've been fucking buds ever since i hated him right at that time in my life I hated but that's all guts. that they just need somebody that's gonna push back yep. a little bit now and then a, a lot of times they don't even they realize they're being an ass, but sometimes they don't realize how far that they're taking it oh, until yeah. somebody's like, "You're being, yeah. you're being unreasonable here. See, you're being I, a dick." I, I'm as a bully when it comes to like fucking with people, but I would never physically hurt yeah. someone. Yeah. But I also would take up for someone. I'm telling you right now, if I saw somebody doing something on the side of the road, That's I me. might get my ass whooped, but I'm going to intervene and try That's to help me. somebody. And I right. love my friends. Yeah. If my friends are in altercation, I am staying with them till it's over. Yeah, I might. You might. You can say something to me. So if someone like talking shit. Motherfucker, you say something bad about me, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. Exactly. I'll dose it right back to you. That ain't going to bother me. And if someone does something to me, I can handle it myself, but don't do something to one of my friends. Yep. Just like me and Harry at the casino and the guy, some old man, some guy was going to start to punk on and stuff. And I thought, I'm going to have to get up and say something because I'm not going <laughs> to let some old man. And I was going to. I Here would've. it is. And, but that old man stood up for himself. You know, he told that motherfucker, he's like, let's go outside. Don't fuck, let's don't go outside. You want to do something, do some shit right here. Yeah. Like I didn't really want to do anything, but yeah. I, but I don't like people, because I'm going to stand up and take up for someone in a crowd. For and sure. I, but there's so many people that don't these days. No, shit. No. Everybody's scared. Yep. Well, you know, uh, used to work for uh, Stasny's hunting guy. Good friend of yours. I think I know who you're talking about, but. <laughs> Johnny. Oh, yeah. That, his son was in traffic on 820. This has probably been 12, 10, 12 years ago. And I was going to say, there's no way Johnny was a bully. No. That's what I was getting at. I'm trying to think of somebody's no. a bully. So, like, little Johnny's in traffic going home after work, and he looks over, and there's a guy beating a girl in a parking lot. 
He just pulls over across the ditch, goes over and walks up. And I told him, he says, that's about enough. That guy <laughs> said, you'll mind your own business. And Johnny said, well, it's my business now. <laughs> that old boy spun to hit him, and Johnny broke like a ton of bones in his hand, just beat the crap out of him. Good for him. you damn right. My I father-in-law mean, is as easygoing a guy as, as you'll ever meet. <clears throat> Jesse was working at, she worked at Dillard's at the mall in Lubbock. And they'd gone up to see her, and um, they were walking outside. And um, there's a big realty, there's a big uh, realtor in Lubbock, famous last name. It was the son of the guy that runs my sister used workbook. So goes outside, and this guy, he's not beating his girlfriend, but he's kind of roughing her up a little yeah. bit. And something flipped in my father in law. And like the old bronc rider, because that's what he, he was a bronc rider before, came out in him. And he about said, you know, same thing, like, you're done, basically. And then the kid kind of smarted off, but then, you know, he's not going to fight anybody that can whoop up on him. So 90% right. of them people don't. He kind of threw that girl into the car and they left. But like, it was, it was mild mannered father in law that I've always known to, I'm about to fucking yeah. rock your world. In well, that's second. the thing is most of those people that whoop up on a, a woman or, or a kid <clears> or something <throat> like that, they ain't going to fight a grown man. No. Especially no. somebody that comes up to they're all They're all mouth runners. you damn right. And they tough, and, on, and tough on victims. If they've got somebody that's a victim, they'll pick on them forever. Yep. Until they, you know. But these older kids in these schools today is a problem. Oh, these man. young kids. But the problem is they don't have any recourse at home. Nobody at home is no. going to beat their ass. They get well, by that with, 17-year-old but, that beat that teacher, I think he'd already been in trouble for some shit yeah. like this before. Uh, now, see, that's where I would get in trouble. If Michelle was teaching or one of my daughter-in-laws oh, was damn, teaching. Could you imagine? I'm telling you right now what I would fucking do. I would go to prison for murder. Yeah. If you could find his fucking body. Because I ain't putting up with that shit. Yeah. If anybody ever hurts one of my, my granddaughters, if a guy ever hurts him, I'm telling you right it's now. Game on. It's fuck, it'd be over. You know, you might be able to know I killed the son of a bitch, but you may not ever find him. It'd be hard to prove it. So, but, but I don't understand where these kids get this at home to just be mean. There's yeah. nothing wrong with being a tough kid. There's nothing wrong I've but always, to just be mean. I've always loved my Yeah, but they, I, I feel like they learn it somewhere. The kid's six, yeah. seven. Yeah. He, and she took his Nintendo Switch was all that she did wrong that day. She's already out there. And I mean, no, I mean, and, and that's another problem is most of the teachers in this yeah, school. Yeah, see that fucking guy, big old pussy walking behind him. He didn't do shit. Most of the teachers in these school are women. Yeah. And yeah. then, I mean, you're not going to get, you don't have a whole lot of guys, but I mean, he's just fucking wailing. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, that cop, I'd put them fucking bracelets on so fucking did oh, that kid's man. fucking bones would have broke. And I'd have asked him, do they hurt? And if yeah. he said no, I'd have <laughs> yeah. cranked down a little bit more. Then, then, but then it's a racist deal. I don't give you know, a piece shit. Of shit. But I'm the same way. That's just, I would make that fucking this kid's life right. do with yeah. race. Right, right, wrong, yeah. wrong. Yeah. 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 Back in the day, I've been a long ride back to that cop car. He'd be taking corners real fast, hitting his head. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, I'd, but, you know these kids are out of control, but the, but he's got he's violent and yeah. they need to do something. But you can't lock them up like they should. They don't want to lock them up. You're no, already they, the they prison systems are already. Yeah, How can this guy in the back? I'm like Jeff. That guy in the back like casually puts his coffee down and like here he comes. Like yeah. right there, he yeah. ought to be in a dead sprint. Yeah, I'd kick that son bitch right in the dick. I'd have poured that coffee in his. He's just eyes. kinda, oh, you know, where am I gonna put this? See, and, then, and what what happens is and it we didn't take anything to get him off of. No. Her. We ought knowing that guy still ain't doing shit. No. What we ought to know is his name and call him up and say, hey, look, don't be such a pussy in life, you know? <laughs> Send him some fucking tampons. Cowboy up. No, you can't do that either, Jeff. Tiger. I don't give two shit. Yeah. Th- what what with Tiger and That's Justin awesome. Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, I got Over in trouble. Some tampons. If Tiger and, But if they're like Tiger, best of friends. Yeah, it, all Tiger had to do was not apologize and it would have changed a lot of things. He just said, listen, Justin tried to send me some prostitutes over there today, so fuck y'all. <laughs> so y'all are what you're watching, the uh, murder uh, mystery on Netflix? I watched it uh, How many a episodes week or so ago. It? It's three episodes, oh, probably probably two. Uh, I was going to, I started it about 9.30 one night. It's all over TikTok right now. You just got the guilty verdict. Yes, and I don't, I'm sure they'll probably put out a fourth episode, but I was. How do they I, already I was, have this going, though? Like, the murders just happened, didn't they? No, this has been going since oh, it like. Has. Oh, I want to say the first. Well, there's one that's still kind of up in arms. It was like 2015. I think the rest of them were maybe 21. 
I, I'm probably getting which the one was wrong. the first? Was the boating accident the first? The one? boating accident was like the. So I the haven't big, seen this yet. The so. big deal. That was Paul, it, wasn't it? Yes. Alex it, is the dad. And Alex Paul is the and dad. Buster. Buster, correct. So there's three mur- there's three murders that murdered people. No, no, no. no, no, no. Well, no. yeah, because Paul. Well, well, that that that's what's up for question right now. So there was a gay kid that got murdered that they were claiming that was in a relationship with Buster, which was the oldest. Or the older of the two, so brothers. the older brother found it, everybody found out he was gay, so he killed the kid. Buster's a young. Well, brother. that that's that's kind of what they're was that the one with the pickup on the side of the road and yes. he was down the road with a head injury but not run over yes. or whatever. Yeah, was, my she, wife was trying to tell me all his this. shoes were on his feet and like they were like, "There's no way he got hit by a car." That but that was I want to say that was like 2015 or 16. So one and kid's that, gay and he killed his lover, but they've covered it up. Or Correct. dad killed it because or, or however that that that's still kind of. They they didn't ever come out with anything on that. Then because Murdoch's a very prominent name. In yeah, whatever. like that. Like they're the big attorneys. Right. They've got the big law firm. <clears throat> and then the son Paul had a boating accident. Had a bunch of his friends on the boat. Right. Hammered drunk. Hits a pylon on a bridge. Ejects <clears throat> a girl. Killed her. One of his buddy's girlfriends or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Knocks her out. She drowns I've in the river. I've read about that story about yes. on a separate deal. Okay. And so they find her five days later. Yeah. Um, they didn't even call the cops, did they, at first? No. No. Yeah. And, like, wouldn't call the girl's parent. Like, she's a missing person, and they wouldn't, wouldn't let tell anybody her. call hey, her this parents. Is to look. And then um, the housekeeper somehow dies. Fell down some stairs, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's this what they a, claim. Clinton shit. Yeah. But, like, had broken ribs and... Like, I think they threw her down the so stairs. So they killed three people so far. And then the Paul, the son, and Alex Murdaugh's wife. Maggie. Maggie. Both get shot out there by their dog kennels on one of their little farms. Paul's son? Yes. yes. How old is the son? At that uh, time, he I was... I don't know. He was... He had to have been in his 20s. He, uh, he because was, I think he, he, he was... was in, he was in or out of right out of college, maybe. So they were murdered by somebody, and they think the right. grandpa killed all of them. No, the dad. I think the dad, Paul, uh, Alex. The dad Alex. killed his son. He, he just got convicted this past the week. Killing of his son and his wife. Yep. Yes. Why did he kill him? They. The thing that I had seen. I've not seen the Netflix series, but I've been following this on TikTok very closely. They said that Paul wa- or Alex was basically embarrassed by this whole thing. Is that what it so was? Is that what more they people? Think? Well, it, it would kind of brought shame to the family name. So he's so and he, he, was, he was a big pill popper too, wasn't he? Oh, it was yeah. Oh yeah. No, there was like <coughs> there was a lot of money that was unaccounted for. He's a like, ter- yeah. And, he's and, embezzled and, and, half a million. He's and then like the, when, when the housekeeper died, which they're kind of pointing that he pushed her down the stairs or the wife pushed her down the stairs, but there was some insurance policy on that particular farm that was like I I don't know the technical terms but he was it was supposed to be awarded to her two sons but it was like 4 or 5 million dollars they never so saw any Paul of that was, money Paul was born in 99 he's the little kid Buster's the redheaded uh, stepchild right. well for money kept by looks I saw somebody say listen they should have given Alex the uh, death penalty for naming his son Buster but you know Which one's Buster? The Buster's, taller one. Buster's right there. the redheaded. Yeah. <laughs> Poor bastard. Uh it said so on June 7, 2021 Paul and his mother were murdered. So. Yeah, so 22 years old Paul Murdoch. Right. What, what was uh so he was right out of But this where, guy the, was he was embezzling money from his uh law firm. For, like, from the law firm, yeah, and then yeah. but they, and he was they, they they kicked him terrible. out of the law firm, right? No, they, it it was just one of those deals that the what was the kid doing? Was he successful in his life, or was he just a fuck up? No, they said he was, was a twenty two. He was a twenty two, just a a drunk. <laughs> but they said uh, drove down the fucking road twice. <laughs> Cops flashlights at him. Come on so, now, dude. So yeah, Paul was shot with a shotgun at close range. They said he shot him. He was so close when he got he got shot under the arm and the and the the shot basically traveled up and the whole top of his head exploded. I cannot imagine fucking but killing the, your kid. But the, the second Damn. shot was in the neck and it, yeah. like, they said it. I mean, there was like some tissue. I just holding his head on. I just but, can't imagine your, his your own, own son. Though. I just but fucking. And then I guess world. with the mom, they shot. Uh, it was like a three hundred blackout or something yeah, like that. It was that. an AR three hundred blackout. Yeah, wow. shot her a couple it, times. It, it, um, it's worth watching. I mean, it's like. I don't know, probably two and a half, maybe three hours tops, but it's worth 
Yeah, it's pretty good TV. Well, watching. um, we were we've been we've tried to start Outer Banks, and uh, every time we that's how they lead you in. You know, you see Spotlight or whatever. It's the Murdaugh mystery. So Jesse has already been like, "Hey, we're watching that." But they said that the there was some key evidence that caught him. Number one, he claimed that he was asleep. So I I, I don't remember exactly, but. No, he wasn't the, asleep. The he murder was, happened he, at he, like eight forty one. He was claiming his, his. He claimed he was asleep. Ma, I don't know if both his parents were still. Uh, yeah, both his parents were still alive. Yeah, but they were in like an assisted living facility, right. and he was claiming that he had gone to visit them. Right, and then Paul had it, a, it showed him. It, there were either like video cameras at the house or wasn't there something. a Snapchat that he was in Paul Paul's Snapchat Paul. So well, he, well, he no, there, no, there, there, there was a, at the kennel. Yes, bef- right before they got killed. Three you minutes could, before, you could hear his voice in yeah. the background. Yes, yeah. you could hear That's Alex's right. voice in the background. So he's, on Paul's he's been Snapchat. convicted of murder. They just haven't seen his team yet. Right. Correct. Right. And yeah. another thing that uh, they they kind of pinned on him, um, even though nobody has picked up on the nine one one call, you're still being recorded. Yeah. So he calls nine one one. And all you hear is the ring, 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 ring. As soon as somebody even picks up that phone, he starts hyperventilating. Yeah. I got to have 911 here right now. And, and they're like, he did not think that he was being recorded. And as soon prior, as somebody picked to, up, it's right. this big act. My wife, my wife and my son have been shot. Last camera action. Right. Yeah, and they were like, that. he didn't know that. Even though nobody had picked up nine one one's recording, I'm making mental notes of this shit. <laughs> so, I thought like, that he got two life sentences though. He, I don't know, he might have. I just I, saw that he I didn't that, know that, that they had the that they had I'm the guilty. guilty totally this wrong. goes right back to my other thinkings. What they need to do if he's convicted, take him out in the back tomorrow and shoot him in the fucking head. Say the state a bunch of money and be over with it. He don't deserve anything more than that. I wouldn't shoot him in the head tomorrow. I'd shoot him in the kneecaps or something. I about pull his toenails out, let him to think death. about it for a yeah. little while. I what? saw where That's the a, Idaho murderer. If he gets convicted in Idaho, he'll he can face the death penalty by a firing squad. Good for them. I saw that. Shoot him fifteen times before you keep. Did no you? You're, you're a Netflix yeah. guy. Shit, I missed. I mean, I watched. <laughs> you watch, got have in you the watched way. Animal Kingdom? Uh, yes. That is a good series. That's some serious. Boy, that's that some gets, fucking weird. Boy, they go I'm all telling you. 15 different things going at once. I've really enjoyed that series. That old mama's. She's, oh, she's, she's a rank a, bitch. She's a bad bitch. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I'm Boy, if, if, if I, old I, Bucky would have pulled I, that shit on her, I'm marrying your daughter. I've been into that shit. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, haven't, I need to go back and finish that. I bet, I've watched a bunch of it. That is a really good series. I've been watching that. I've been watching the uh, Godfather of Harlem. I haven't about seen the, that. About the guy that's Bumpy Johnson sells brings heroin in and uh, and he's fighting against the Italians during the race riots of the early '60s with uh, Martin Luther King in there or not Martin Luther King. Uh, what's X? What's Malcolm the Tenth? Yeah, yeah, Malcolm X. Anyways, it's it's pretty interesting. Malcolm the Tenth. Yeah, that's what I used to call him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it says he got life here, so he's he's going away for a while. I thought I saw a video of the judge talking to him when he was. Yeah, yeah. he was like, "Listen, it, he, like, some, some of the mean, defense." He's like, if, "If you've ever tried that, like you would get laughed out of the." Well, when he was telling him like what his ver- the verdict was of guilty in his senses, he was like, "And you're going to serve life for this for your wife." Because you, you know, I mean, just like, and then he's like, you're going to serve another life term for your son, Paul. And mm-hmm. like, I mean, just beating the shit out of him, which. Oh, yeah. Obviously no, he and, needed, and then, no, then he brought up, he was like, yeah, I hope you wake up every morning and you have to think about your oh, wife he and was, your son. I mean, like, he was freaking it, rude it was, about it. It was yeah. awesome. Had Should it. be that way. Yeah. Um, and they've released some like jailhouse uh, phone calls he's made to Buster. And he's like, he's trying the, to get the, the best, though, trying to get Buster to go do shit at the house. The best though, Buster's the, like, the, bitch, that's my house now. Can you go feed the, the dogs, please? The yeah. Netflix series ends, and it's on a, a jail call to Buster, and he goes, "Hey, son, you know how's everything going? Hey, uh, I've been hearing a few things. Are they coming out with a, a Netflix show or something Whoa. on all this?" And then the whole, I mean, that's the end of the series. How old's but Buster? He'd oh, have shit. to be twenty. I bet twenty five, twenty six. Could you imagine that life? Mm-mm. No, and he he's the only living family member. Yeah, I mean that's it. I mean Christmas time and all that stuff, and they're just your mother and your brother are dead, because and your, your dad's dad. in prison. Yeah, do you think he visits his dad in prison ever? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, be hard to. But he was like, you could tell he was kind of like 
<clears throat> Buster's 25. He was born in 96. Um, <clears throat> he was wanting him to do something. And he coded it as like, yeah, if you want to go. I, I, he said, hey, Buster, how's it going? He's like, I just got to thinking. Uh, we had just filled those feeders up before all this happened. And he's like, I bet they're spilling over. And I bet there's deer everywhere out there if you wanted to go hunting. Buster's like, no, Dad, I think I'm good. I don't think I need to go hunting out there. He's like, well, some of the, some of the guys wanted to know, like, if you were going to, and then he switches it to dove hunt. He's like, if you were going to dove hunt or whatever, they, if you don't want to do it, they'll go. But I don't, it's got to be code for something because he's wanting him to go to that house yeah. to get something. And Buster's like, no, I, well, and that's I think deal, I'm good. That's the deal. Like Buster and one of his friends left, like went by, they've got like kind of a gun room next, close to the kennels, but went by and like, they've got, there was some, he wasn't an, even an investigator. He was just kind of some outside guy that sent up a drone that flew it over the house the day that they were kind of investigating and looking at the house. Mm-hmm. And Buster and one of his buddies are carrying out armloads of guns. Oh, no shit. Putting them in the pickup, which, you know, you wouldn't think under an investigation they would You'd be, be leaving moving. with firearms. Yeah, evidence. It, but, you know, that kid's not an investigation. He didn't do nothing. If they've got the firearm, that's their stuff. You can't, <clears throat> you know, I don't yeah, know. It's yeah, a crime but, scene. Uh, yeah, but, yeah the, but the crime scene's over if they've already done that. Well, at that time, I don't think it. I mean, that was kind of. Still yellow tape everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're fucking up. Because how do you. Because. Yeah. I and, watched, and, and, and that's the deal. I mean, you know, there's still like there was speculation that he had killed the the gay kid in the highway and right. the, the gay kid. Boy, well, we are just uh, yeah, we're just, labeling everybody which today. Which is fine. Well, I mean, that, is, that, if that, you want to be gay, wait. I'm just worried about you. You're talking about a gay kid. You had a. You uh, pointed a gun at an Asian, at, at, at an Indian at kid, an Indian Asian, kid Muslim. At UT. <laughs> you pointed a gun at a Muslim. Let's just call it a Muslim is what that was. <laughs> I don't, after, rifle. I don't what know. was after 9-11? I don't know what he was, but he was darker complected, and he walked to the street corner and got on the cell phone. And he was like, God damn, I, had, left, where I, I left my had, home country because of this have shit. Have you seen uh, National Lampoon's Vacation? Oh, yeah. A Clark? That's that's BB gun. It can cause a serious flesh wound here. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, do you have the I've picture had a of the, of the squirrel on the arrow? Oh, yeah. That's what I was saying. It's one of I my Facebook. I no, any, I couldn't find yeah. it. I don't I, have any service. I went all through Did, your uh, Facebook thing. Austin go, cops no, have no sense no, of go, humor. Yeah, it's a, it's one of my profile pictures. No, I went through all your profile no, you pictures. Didn't. I you, did too. You're no. a little chunky, bud. Oh yeah, yeah. So what? T- tell us about your new girlfriend. He said you're a little chunky. <laughs> Jeff, I, you don't have a new girlfriend. I don't. Have, I've picked up a little cow deal this last fall, and I don't have time for a woman right now. All right, so here's the first. I'm telling you. No, I've, I've gone through all of these. Is what I'm telling you. I've, there's not a single one where you've got. You hadn't gone far enough. You were fucking playing. You were number fifty for uh, Albany. I, I went all the way back to you it's running both, out of the kennel, uh, out of the tunnel. Go, go kind, back, go back, go back. What kind of back. diet are you on? You've lost a lot of weight. Look at that big son of a bitch. That's your dad. Yeah, see those hands. Those you are thought the ones, he, you thought he was going to fucking those are the ones grab, him with grab your ass. neck, bitch. <laughs> see there, you're all good now. He's got your hand. He's got his hand around you. He loves you. That's a see, that's thirteen. Hold yeah, on, no, no, no. Look at this pig. Look good, at the cutters on that. That was a good one. That's so much weigh about four fifty. No. no, he's probably two eighty, two ninety. Well, he, he was he was a that. big he was a big hog. He yeah. looks bigger. Than, you don't see nothing over four hundred pounds ever. Well, anymore. well, that's like you that don't wise, normally that, see anything with cutters like that either. That Wise County hunt. Um, that you know, you get all these hunters saying, "Oh, I shot a 400, 450 pound." Look pig. at the deer he was shooting, even as a young buck. That that was right after one of my pickup. Yep, Bucky well, was with me. I lost the gut knife that night. I mean, no, okay. Oh, 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 there's a story there. <laughs> there's a Lauren Thompson. Keep going. This it could be. It could get good. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, that that was one. That, yeah. <clears throat> what? That was it? No, it's shit. I don't. Know I'm telling it. you. Yeah. I've gone. Okay. I went all the way hey. to when you were running out of the tunnel. Get, well, it's gonna be on. Well, there's there's UT. Hey, there's your UT is, days. Yeah, I mean, it's right in the middle of UT days. And now. Um, no, that's it. No. You missed it. it I didn't miss it. It wasn't there. I know. It... See, and now you're swinging that baseball bat. Nothing. Number 50. That's where I got. Over at Jim Kern Field. That's a damn nice little right. league field. Running yeah. at, right, and, then, 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 and then I stopped right there when you were coming out of the tunnel. Yeah. No, it's it's on there somewhere. But that was our – that's where we kind of <laughs> – my sophomore year, we lived in a house over West Campus. It was – Kind of a residential neighborhood. Kind of. Kind of. Well, it was. And same deal. I'd go to Cabela's, get a sack of corn. We had a big pecan tree in the front yard. I'd put corn out at the base of the pecan tree. Go to... Maybe this will help me. 
I got anything? Yeah, here? go to uh, albums. Mobile uploads. Yeah. <laughs> well, I made it because it's before you started. We'll find it here. Is the, are anyway, those controlled burns? You, yeah. There we go. There's some UT days. God damn! Look at that sunburn, bub. Did you date some? Did you date a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader? Or you just love? No, them? we were just flirting with them. There's that was them giving me a moment. No. Walk. I've got to tell that, you. That, though, look at Lester down here in the bottom right corner. Oh, yeah, right there. This one? No, no over. This one? That one. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a cross between Clay Reed and fucking Allen off of Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, though, I am so glad that my high school days are not on Facebook. The The little bit of college that's on there is, is, yeah, is, keep, is keep good going. enough. It'll be Where was this at? The Dove Ar- Hunt. Argentina. You did go to Argentina? Yeah, that was our senior trip. No shit. Well, well hell, that'd be senior year. So maybe, I don't know. So it went too I, far. So anyways, yeah. there's No, of you. no, so, yeah. But the, they, so, sophomore year, we're living at this house. Put a corn pile out at the base of the pecan tree. Well, we could, we all had bows, and we weren't going to, I didn't have the pellet gun at the time, but we would shoot the squirrels with bows off of our couch. You could literally sit on the couch in the living room, crack the front door, and shoot out to the pecan tree. Well, one of my roommates, it was finals week, and we're all jacking around at the house, drinking beer, and he shoots a squirrel and kind of hits him a little back. Well, the squirrel runs over onto the neighbor's porch, and he's got an arrow run through him. So I run over there, catch the squirrel, pick him up, bring him back over to our yard. Well, they take a picture of me. And then we proceed to hold the squirrel down, and one of my roommates stomps on him a couple times. <laughs> well, the neighbor across the street's watching this whole production, and he is livid. And he is screaming, I'm calling the cops! I'm calling the cops! And I said, so I set the squirrel down, walk <laughs> across the street. <laughs> I said, sir, I said, I know this sounds really far-fetched. I said, but we're some small-town kids from West Texas. I said, it's really expensive living in Austin. I said, there's a delicacy in West Texas. I said, we eat fried squirrel. <laughs> and I said, this is our fourth one of the day. I said, so anyway, <laughs> we're, we're going to, we're going to have a squirrel Friday night. And I said, I'd love to have you over. I said, we haven't formally introduced ourselves <laughs> and like playing the good old boy, shake like his hand. Right yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you. No, sir. And so anyway, I, I said, you can watch me. I said, I'm going to take the squirrel inside. I'm going to dress him, skin him out. And I said, if you want to come over, we're going to cook about 6.30. And he's like, no, no, I'm good. Like, he's kind of Jesus. backing up a little he bit. He don't want no fried squirrel. Yeah. And, yeah. No, and, and I'm, like, intentional about it. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, it's good. And so, anyway, we walk back over to the house, take the squirrel inside. Well, we had, like, a kolache box, white donut-looking box. Well, I just threw the squirrel in that. Well, I'd gone on a date with a girl. She is one of the girls in the picture. The cowboy <laughs> cheerleader? No, no, one of the other ones. And uh, we got on the Texas OU weekend. It was the date from hell. It was, yeah, why? It was, oh, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> was it, it was, your first date with an out-of-town date? No, she was from Highland Park, but it was big city, small town, West Texas. It just didn't work. <laughs> Date and, from hell. He no. was in love. Did you end up at Stan's? Did you end up at Stan's Blue Note? No, no. She had me on a pretty tight leash. But anyway, so <laughs> I got to think, and I, I at that stage of the game, I was pretty disappointed in her and kind of hated her. And I, so you took her to. How Dallas. long did you stay around after uh, you hated her? A little while. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to and see you if do. you can. You got to see. You know, maybe get, she'll get, change. Get back to shore. So anyway, we're sitting there and drinking beer and i thought well, what are we gonna do with that squirrel and so one of our girlfriends walked over and i said hey do you mind writing on that box happy finals good luck studying she said no absolutely not that, that'd that be great and so i said don't open the box i said just write that in your handwriting so in fe- you know how girls yeah. write and she writes it out so we drive over to this girl's apartment complex that i've had the date from hell with and her three roommates are there, and she's not there. How many and days old is this squirrel? <laughs> no, it was that day. Oh, it's he, he, he's, he, fresh. he's fresh. He's fresh, so she could eat him still. But <laughs> but he's well endowed. He's got a big old <laughs> set of nuts on him. <laughs> and I've got him laying belly up in this box. <laughs> we, I just throw it in their refrigerator, and we go in and bullshit with these other girls, and 
Well, my jackass roommates have posted this picture on Facebook of me holding the squirrel with the arrow through him. <laughs> so Lauren comes home and... Oh, Lauren is her name? Yes. That is a Highland Park name. Lauren? Well, Lauren we're not, not going to say no, go that. Go ahead. What is her last Lauren name? Lauren and Heidi. Uh, Lauren Thompson. <laughs> well, that's a name. There's a lot of Lauren Thompson, so you're yeah. probably safe. No, she pulls the box out. And opens it up thinking somebody's left her donuts or cupcakes. Oh, no. And opens it up and his squirrel's belly up laying in there. <laughs> Holding its nuts up. He <laughs> called me on repeat for an hour. And I would not answer. And, and I didn't know they'd post it on Facebook. Oh, shit. And she was like, I know you did it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get my dad involved. I'm going to get the... Oh, jeez. What's her fucking dad do? I don't know. Well, that's but, one thing I would have asked first, you know. Yeah, what does he do? <laughs> I mean, he he makes money, but he yeah. he wasn't a fan of me, so it didn't. Matter. I mean, if he's a, f a pilot for Southwest Airlines, no big deal. But if he's no, a time he, attorney, you know, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. No, and uh, and she, anyway, she said, "You got thirty minutes to get over here and get the squirrel out of my refrigerator." So, bitch, calm down. We loaded up, went back over there, and retrieved our squirrel. And Have you? That uh, was the end of it. The videos on on Instagram of people raccoon hunting, I've never done that. I did not know that they would attack these e callers like they do. Hell, I, I did a varmint hunt last weekend, <clears throat> and all these coyotes are paired up right now. I mean, it's breeding season, but for whatever right. reason, they kind of get a little more aggressive. They do. But I shot six coyotes and a cat, and out of those, four of the coyotes and the cat were all... I had three coyotes literally roll my e-collar. Really? Like, hit it running wide open. Did y'all you know, see the video Zach did yesterday? Yeah, he sent me that. Ten steps, and he's he's wearing a green shirt and blue jeans, and he did one Cagney or whatever the fuck call it is, and the coyote just sprints. No, Zach's they're, all they're, in on that varmint hunt right now. Zach loves it. No, yep. it was crazy. And like the cat that I called in, he was standing out there at a hundred yards, and I saw him, and you know he's kind of trotting in, and then he just sat there for a second, and he makes a mad break for it, and runs up to the call and takes his left paw and is sitting there swatting my decoy. And I shot him, and literally he was laying. I had a video, but he was laying six inches from the call. Maybe. I mean, Do right you, there uh, on top of it. Why are they so aggressive this time of year? Me I guess it's breeding. a... Well, but, yeah. But what I turns on hungry, it? too, I think. Uh, yeah, but that's the thing. You know, back in January and really February, we hunted some contests, yeah. and they didn't call that well. They, you, you were shooting them out at 150, 200 yards, just kind of a curiosity right. deal. But, like, right now, for whatever reason, they are running you over what is uh well have you called in a have you seen a mountain lion no i i saw i'm pretty sure i saw one that's shoot that's been seven or eight years ago i thought you and your dad saw one we saw he your dad <laughs> saw one and my, you don't believe yeah. I don't know. I just that's, well, I know yeah, this I is, yeah. I you don't it. believe his dad his dad seen one but well, by god he didn't see it so he don't I, believe I, it i, I well no, I, t I take that back. We did. We saw the one south of, between Albany and Moran, yeah. and he crossed the highway. It was during turkey season. We'd been turkey hunting, had shotguns in the vehicle. He crossed the highway in front of us and ran out in the wheat field and stood there at 100 yards, and there was no deny. I mean, the tail, the whole nine yards. This and was then, at Albany? Yeah, between Albany and Moran. I but saw that, one outside been, of Burke Burnett one time the same way across the road on me, and he jumped across the road, and his tail was at the yellow line, and his head was at the... And the thing the is, road. like, I, and I know that it's a rarity, and there's a lot of people that call bullshit on, but like that tail, I don't. that that tail, that's the that's that's what that's I knew for sure I'd seen one, and I've seen them a couple of times, but it's always just a you don't ever get and, to see one fucking just yeah walking through itself. Yeah, I just and, wish people would stop putting pictures on predator hunting pages. Saying North. what is this, and it's a picture oh, of a bobcat a, or a big house cat. And it's like, please, just <clears throat> a big house cat. People do, yeah, all the time. Like, they do that, and they're like, it's a mountain lion. I'm like, just stop. <laughs> Fuck, I hate people. It's gray. It's not, it's a house cat. It's got a white face. You know what's amazing is is I've got a friend out here that they've they've seen a mountain lion twice on their game cams, not very I, far from Knox City. Yeah, and he doesn't want everybody to know because he don't want everybody yeah. to think he's fucking crazy. Yeah, but he's seen it two times in a three month deal, and the neighbor now. They saw it, so he knows someone has seen it. He they saw it with their eyes. He saw it on camera, and his neighbor was said they seen it. And 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 you know they're around. But the the deal is is you yeah, can shoot at one, 
It's very rare. Well, I met a kid, Andy flew next to a kid that shot mountain lions um, on the airplane. That kid shot some mountain lions with dogs and without dogs, but he lives in Utah. Yeah. yeah. Got a lot of them. I'm but, seeing but a mountain lion in West Texas. That's like Tyler Terrell down there at, uh, where Buffalo was that? Gap. Yeah, Jim Ned, Buffalo Gap. On that high but fence ranch. A couple years ago, they were down there just jacking around. They were having some missing animals in that high fence, and they thought it was coyotes and bobcats. Mm-hmm. Went down there, had his girlfriend, a buddy, and his, his girlfriend. girlfriend. And they were it, jacking around on a Saturday night. And turned on a mountain, mountain lion in heat. heat. And, and he, it came he comes walking down the road. A great big male come in. No uh, he was like 160 pounds. Like, you can look at. Look yeah, up, I remember that. Look up uh, Is it on we Instagram? T- Tyler Terrell. We had on a, Instagram? Facebook. Facebook, or, Facebook. Yeah. Could yeah. you imagine shooting a 235, 250 pound cat? That's a big fucking yeah. cat. And they're all muscle. I mean, oh. you, look, you look at these little. 20 pound bobcats and there's zero body fat on them. them I them, mean, they're them deer that you shoot. Could you imagine having to wrestle one of them fuckers? <laughs> they're solid fucking muscle. Yeah. It ain't got no claws on the end of that. Some bitch ain't going to bite you. I don't know. No. Them hoes hurt. But, but that's what I'm saying. January? But they're fucking muscle. Oh, there it is right there. I remember yeah. this. We had a, we had a quail hunter take a picture of a mountain lion and a baby walking down our paved road. Fucking thing. Headquarters. Your mountain lion and a baby. Yeah. yeah they're there. Look at that fucking cat. That's a, uh, I mean, that's and a they real, did. That's a real they, deal. They yeah, did was, uh, mountain lion in distress or in heat. heat. In yeah. heat. They were just like just jackassing around. And then them questions over there. And you killed it. Why? People are so fucking stupid. It just blows my mind. The people in California don't want you shooting at some bitches. But then when their pets get eaten or one of their kids do or they're jogging and they get attacked, then they who got said, a problem with it. Who said that? If you'd looked on the comments on the right oh, side you the other comment. Read, go read all the comments yeah. on that. Dude, they caught so much shit over that. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats to the first men that were able to score an incredible animal. Yeah, but you read a lot of them. Um, yeah, people are fucking. But it, it was just one of those deals. Those guys were just out jacking around yeah. on a Saturday night. I'd kill one. Oh, it, I, I, there ain't I, very I, many I, things. I would love. There's not very many things I want to shoot. I don't give I'll, two shits. I will admit. I last night I watched Epic Yellowstone on the Smithsonian Channel, <laughs> and it was down the Snake River. But they followed the. Buffalo, the elk, the grizzly bears, the wolves, the cow. It, That's but a cool it, show. But it, it, it was really fascinating. Yeah. To, I love now. I love to and, see and, stuff. And, I just don't care about look killing. At, look anything. at this fucking cat. So Derek Wolf, he played for the Denver Broncos. He's probably six five, two eighty. Look at the head on that cat. Look at that fucking thing. That's a big cat. Like his head is doubling over. Basically, is that a is that a Colorado one? Uh, I don't. He's he's Rocky from Colorado Mountains. a lot. Or he lives in Colorado, so I'm assuming so. That, assuming that cat so. weighed 250 pounds, I bet. Uh, he it's might have. Uh, Cameron Haynes commented on it. Yeah, he's he's a, he looks like a fucking savage running through the woods. I've never seen him anything that even I thought would be a mountain lion. Yeah, if you saw that motherfucker, you would. you think it was any, a Bengal tiger. I'm, well, I'm talking about yeah. at the ranch, though. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? And Most I, of them are ollie size around yeah, here. I spend every day out there. But oh. I did was driving down the fence line the other day. He's hunting uh, with Kid Rock right there. Yeah. Derek Wolf was. I found a spot where a deer got hung in a barbed wire fence, jumping over it. And his, mm-hmm. Both his back legs were still on the fence. Yeah, look at Derek Wolf and his girlfriend. He's a big motherfucker. Oh God, yeah, he is huge. He's bigger than well, you. Well, I mean, he, oh, play, he, he played D lineman. Go I look, mean, go go back one picture. Look at it up there next to Demarcus Ware. Uh, oh no, no shit. He's and Vaughn Miller. Look at the gosh damn it the arms on that guy. Yeah. But anyway, there's a spot probably half the size of this room that was tore up on the ground. So I got to watch looking, and then there's a spot of blood. And I, I tell you about this? No. I told Jamie, and I, I hadn't told many people because I don't want to sound like the crazy guy, but <laughs> hey, there's a spot of blood where you can see where the deer was drugged, and then I'll follow it out there. It probably goes 30 yards to a tree. And then there's blood up the tree, around the tree. Then it goes back to the southeast to another tree, and that's where it ends. Nothing more. What? I swear. I, I a couple years ago. Is it a cat? I don't know. Middle, yeah, what else is going to do well, that? Bobcat. You'd be surprised what a bobcat. What, can how do. strong they really are in the peanut country. Yeah, Coach Mack told me a bobcat fought him off a doe one time. Well, it didn't fight him off of it. It he scared him off of a doe. Of a doe. He said, Fuck it, he had <laughs> but um, <laughs> you saved was, me from a lot of. Work. I was in the peanut country a couple of years ago, and I jumped a mountain lion. I was driving down the road, and so the ditch was say. next to me. Motherfucker, I saw the son of a bitch. Fucking mountain lion jumped up. I'm the reason nobody comes forward because <laughs> of Jeff. Yeah, some bitch jumped up and disappeared. Now, there's a hedgerow there. Drove around. I never could see it. I kept thinking, motherfucker's got to be here somewhere. It's it's plowed fields on both sides, except some yeah. Never could see it. 
drove around the other side of the field. Look, there's a pig. It had killed a pig and was dragging a pig down that ditch on the other side of the turn that like the road is going and there's a ditch here and all that shit's there. He, I drove up and he was there and it scared him and he jumped up. Never seen that some bitch again. That same place, there's been multiple people have seen them over the years. But I saw the fucker. I mean, he I'll, jumped but, straight but up. But that's like the, you know, their radius. They say their radius is 70 to 100 miles. Yeah, right. But I don't understand where he went to. What do you mean? He could have gone anywhere out here. Sure, it's only it, 30 it, miles yeah, out here. That's half no, of no, his no, radius. No, 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 no. I don't know where he went after he right. jumped up. I stopped, right. backed oh, up. I got you, yeah. He didn't cross a road nowhere. I got in the ditch. And I thought, hmm, do I really want to walk up on this some bitch in the ditch? So no. I got back in my truck and drove with the window down. I thought, right. what about I roll my window up and I fucking jump in here? Imagine me, a fat guy, getting killed by a fucking mountain lion jumping in his truck window. How did it get him? Yeah, mountain but lion. never ever saw him. Went, drove all around the thing. But I'm talking about other than the ditch, it's a plowed field. All four fields around there are plowed. There's nowhere for him to go. Yeah. My brother-in-law saw one North Knox City one time. He said it crossed the road on him. He said, I got my gun out, pulled in the ditch. He said, I was going to shoot that some bitch in the ditch. Never seen him again. They just I disappear. Know. I want one good shot at one. Yep. That's, just, yeah, just I'll tell you, if I ever see a mountain lion, you'll know because I'll either have a total pickup <laughs> or he'll be on the back end of that son of a bitch driving through town. I always like it when we're turkey hunting and uh, coyotes and shit yeah. come up. They think they're sneaky. My, my uncle got hit by a bobcat down in South Texas. Didn't know he was there? Was re- sitting there running a diaphragm call <laughs> calling. Oh, no, and, just going and, the, sound. and the cat just came up behind him and had bite marks on his... No shit. Did yeah. take rabies shots? I think he. I think he wound up. I think he did. Wyman yeah. got one nicked him, and he shot and killed it and put it up and sent it off with this. He did not want it to run off and him have to go through all that test yeah. shit. Right. That and I can't remember the whole story. Painful. No, but it, and it like I don't think it broke oh, his skin, fun. but he had Been bite marks cat, on his cat. shoulder. Yeah. And, That's a good reason to use decoys when you turkey hunt, is so that when these predators come out, they'll go to the decoy, not the call. Oh, you, ever, yeah. you ever had an owl come at you at nighttime? Fuck yeah. That scared the owl. shit out of you. B- Bucky Les tells a story that they were hunting out at the nail one night. You can. Hell, you can tell. I don't remember all of it that well. No, so they, go ahead. they just said it was a cold night, and they were in one of those contests and got in the high rack. Les is up there blowing a hand call. Wah, wah, wah. It said you, you could hear the owl fly by the first time. Uh-huh. said here in a second, Bucky was wearing a toboggan, said that some bitch came down and swapped the back of his <laughs> I had a buddy head. of mine that happened to. And too. Bucky said, to hell with y'all, I'm getting I out, of here. I'm, out of here. I'm was, done. Have you ever seen the claws on a dead owl? Fuck yeah. Yeah. They're huge. My buddy got whacked at the same time. I can tell you a funny fucking varmint story, and I'm not much of a varmint hunter. Me and a buddy of mine, uh, John Ballard, and a buddy of mine named Chuck Smith, where it went varmint hunting. And Chuck was not did not hunt as much as we did. We hunted a lot more, and he didn't grow up in that environment. But anyways, he he called. He was in from law school. And he's like, "Hey, I want to go. What are y'all doing tonight? So we're gonna go. We're going varmint hunting. Do you care if I go? No, I don't, I don't care at all. All right. I said, be at my house in 45 minutes. Do you care if I bring a rifle? So you don't have to, but if you want to, that's fine. He shows up with freaking thirty out six or some shit, <laughs> and he's gonna, so he's gonna knock one down. <laughs> it, it's cold. It's December, yeah, because he just got back from winter break. So it's Christmas break. So it's in December sometime, and it's cold. I, I mean, it's probably 25, 26 degrees. And John picks me up, and Chuck shows up like he's going on an abominable snowman hunt. He's got all his shit on in the car, and we carry our stuff and put it in the truck. We get in there, and I I'm, I ride in the middle because I'm gonna make him get all the gates. So on Smart. the way, real cowboy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he, he gets in there and he's fucking doesn't sweating. mind riding bitch as long as you don't have to get a We got we got all the heaters on and shit and he's fucking hot. He's like, God damn. I said, I don't know why you're wearing your fucking clothes. Well, I, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to. I said, Fuck yeah. He's some bitch is sweating and shit. I said, You're gonna freeze your ass off. And get there. So he goes, Now tell me about this varmint hunting. What what should I expect? I said, Well, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna <clears throat> we sent in the lake air ahead. I said, There's a berm over there. It looks as flat on the where the water's at right there. I said, we're going to hunt there. And I said, there's, I said, supposedly someone's seen a mountain lion there. So bobcats, coyotes, and maybe a mountain lion is what we're, that's what we're hunting after. We'll make a call and we'll sit there in the dark. And I, he said, do I have to worry about none of them? I said, no. I said, the only thing that's going to concern you is a Saskatchewan and gift whiff. He's like, huh? I said, you know what a gift whiff is, right? I'm just playing line that motherfucker had, I, he didn't know I was fucking with him. He's like, oh yeah, gift whiff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we go, we go about those. five minutes down the road. He's like, uh, go ahead and, uh, re-educate me on these gift whiffs. I said, well, I said, they're like a Wolverine. And I said, these got these sex glands are under their eyes. And when they're in heat, they turn bright red. And you can see them at nighttime. And this is the time of year they're in heat. And I said, they're attracted to heat like a spotlight. So when you turn a spotlight on, you got to worry about them coming into you. I said, I said and so he's like, dick. oh, okay. And I said, that's what, so we get to the gate. And I said, get the gate. So he's like, 
Why don't you get the gate? By myself? Well, fuck yeah, we're right here. <laughs> right, fucker. He closes the door. John's like, well, Chuck's scared already. You got him fucked up already. So he closes the door, goes over, and he gets the gate, and we get back in, we drive, and then we're going to carry. This is back in the days where we used to have to carry a car battery car with battery, us. Car battery, yeah. Car, yeah, car right. battery and a spotlight. And so we go, car- we, we call our shit, and we go over to this cliff, and we're going there. Before we get there, Chuck goes, uh, are we going to load our rifles here? I said, what for? Well, I mean, just, just in case something comes after us. I said, ain't nothing going to get after us. He's like, are you sure? I said, fuck yeah. I said, I want you shooting my ass. We get there. We get set up. He loads up his old fucking gun. And we are sitting there, and we're calling and calling. And we hit the old light, you know, <laughs> looking for some eyes with old red lens on it. And you can feel the heat on that light. Chuck, boy, that light's awful hot, isn't it? <laughs> the light's awful hot. The light's awful hot. Turn it off. I, I had something happen that night. I've ever, never, ever happened on Vormont Hunt. I haven't done a lot. I heard something, but there wasn't there. It sounded like a herd of fucking cows just <laughs> running at you like fucking Could buffalo. There. there wasn't a cow in the place. Oh. Never, there was nothing there. I turned the fucking light. I thought we was fixing to get trampled by yeah. stampede. You put it in cow. your own head. And boy, I'm like, couldn't figure it out. What you, that light's awful hot. That light's awful <laughs> hot. About five minutes of calling, this fucking owl comes in. <laughs> And hits him on the fucking head on his toboggan. That motherfucker commences to open up that thirty out six. Pow, 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 pow. I go, what is? He goes, it's a Saskatchewan and gift whip. It's a gift whip. Never ever told that some bitch or wasn't in no such thing as a he gift whip. He didn't know what no. he did. I could see the red eyes and everything. <laughs> I, said, all. I said, Chuck, that's somebody she didn't want to fight you. He just wanted to fuck you. That's what he was after. <laughs> Sex glands. When that nail hit my head, though, I was like, piss on y'all. Y'all can have this it's shit. It's a very scary day. I'd know, I had had that happen to me before up on the Red River farming hunting some. I've had owls and Do hogs. they mistake you or do they think They're, that you're invading yeah. their territory? Well, they just <clears throat> finally catch it and. They're coming to that noise, and they're like, oh, We okay. We had one about, I guess that was about a month ago, but we were hunting a contest, and it was right at dark. And there's a, of course, you're calling. There's an owl that lands in a dead tree. Mm-hmm. He's sitting there 15 yards from the call. Here come three coyotes in. And so I get spun around moved over on them, and I'm fixing to shoot one. Well, I'm not looking out of my peripheral, but the owl flies out of the tree and comes <laughs> down and grabs the decoy off the call and oh, flies shit. off with it. Well, the guy's hunting with, he's boom, boom, boom. <laughs> of course, the coyotes haul ass. And I was like, damn it, you screwed that up. He said, he stole my decoy. Have you ever, are the coyotes always this aggressive this time of year, or is this something special this year? Because uh, the way it, Zach it, described it. It's it, 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 it just happened over the last two weeks. Like, but I mean, when you hunt, when you hunted a year ago, March last 9th, last Last year was terrible. Shots. What was the year that... It was 2008. Oh, 2019. 19, that was the most aggressive set of coats I've ever called in my life. Hey. But there were so many. We, we had we, a lot we, of we, coats. We, we would shoot, in those 24-hour contests, we'd shoot 20 <clears throat> to 25 coats a hunt. Less really. than Wade, Jamie and I were hunting Clay's hunt. It was when it was shotgun only. And yeah. Wade and Les were hunting. Y'all killed how many the first day? Shoot, 16 or 17. And then killed 26? Total. Yeah, uh, we, sh- we shot by, seven or eight more the next morning. By Sunday at lunch with shotguns. Jamie with shot, and I, with Jamie shotguns. And I killed 16, and we thought we were doing it all. So I wonder it if, was if there's just an abundance exactly. of coyotes yeah. right now. That no, they're, well, no, I, I, no, no? They're, I don't know. I, don't, I think our numbers are down. Then why but, are they but, so but, but like fucking in, reckless in, right t- now? In 2019, that was coming off all those good rainfall years, yeah. and they all had good A litters of pups, of pups. Three or four pups, right. probably. And... Then I think kind of their rabbit population and the rats and quail and everything else ran out, and they didn't have anything to eat. Well, and maybe it's that. Maybe it's that there's not a good population of these these like little rabbits and shit. So when they hear well, one, well, and that's and like back in January, you know, you do these hunts and and run a rabbit call or a woodpecker the whole, you know, for twelve hours, and you see two or three coyotes, right? And I, you know, they're there, yeah, but they're at, at, at some point, you've got to. Think like a coyote. Well, if there aren't any rabbits, why are and we you doing hear a rabbit a, call? You hear a rabbit distress. <laughs> why is he going to come into a rabbit distress? You right. know, like you you run a piglet distress or a the a, snakes are what it's crazy to me. What do you mean? Can't find any. No snakes. Yeah. Hardly. No. Thank God. That's not a problem. Thank God. Like I, I don't went, like snakes. Tuesday, I went to. Why sell, are we looking for snakes, Bucky? Because they're bringing fifteen bucks a pound. Yeah. Oh, for the that. Sweetwater rattlesnake roundups this, this weekend. weekend, and they sell fifteen bucks a pound. I think it's fifteen. It was thir- it, it, it started it was, out it was at thirteen, thirteen or fifteen for the first three thousand pounds. It was thirteen for the first three thousand, and then ten for the next three thousand pounds. But 
They're up to 15. Now. Well, I heard a rumor that because so many people, like their number one and two buy, or sellers, mm-hmm. don't have hardly any snakes. Here on, I want to go pigs? check. I saw two snakes Tuesday went to seven dens laying out. I think it's pigs? No, I, they that, said that. I, in, I think that cold spell yeah, killed they the said hell in, out of them. In, 20, in February? In 21, <laughs> yeah. they said if those dens, if those snakes didn't get at least like 30 foot in there, it killed most of them. Really? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing. From, from, but, 20, but, from two years the, ago. The deal was, too, wow. though, which was interesting. After that, uh, so that happened Valentine's Day of 21. It's during my birthday, yeah. Yeah. That, that cold spell blew in week. on Valentine's Day. But that's a man that's but, got a lot of dates in his life, romantic. I went on a date. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna cuddle before. up, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Cold weather. That's cold weather. Last, <laughs> last, last, last year at this time, he was in a serious, committed relationship. Remember that? Oh yeah. yeah. It, was a, I, it was an arranged marriage. It didn't work out too yeah. well. I know where he's going with this story because I killed a snake the next week as well. Yeah, but then I went and drove around a bunch of the, you know, because March rolls around, you yeah. get some warmer days, and the snakes are laying out. Right. Every one of those dens, though, there was dirt thrown out of it. It was like I don't know if the coats or Invaded it. Coons. But evidently there was something back in there, and I'm sure it was dead snakes. And they got in there and, and they, and they could smell it. See, yeah. We've been but, going to these dens, and Paul Ivy and Jamie and I, we went to 11 dens. So you know where the dens are yeah. from year to year. Yeah, well, they we don't, they we don't catch move. them all the time, every, yeah. almost every year. You motherfuckers think I'm crazy for Fuck. storm chasing, and I ain't much ready to do that. Then. I'm not big on catching them anymore. I just want to kill them. Well, after I'm all for that shit. After Miles got bit, me and Snakes and there you go. Anymore. What do you do? You gas them out? And <coughs> we don't. Yeah. We try not to. We used to try not to gas them so you didn't ruin the dens. You just kind of pick them up you on can, hot days. But you can run the drip like natural gas condensate. Right. Yeah. You can run drip and that stuff evaporates and it won't yeah. screw up the den. If you use like if you gas, if you use straight up gasoline, you'll you run them gas snakes them away. You'll push and, them away, and, and, or, and then it's done. no good. Yeah, and you yeah. Can get too much gas on the snake and it'll kill him. If we could get rid of snakes. Mosquitoes and Democrats are world be a whole lot better. And mesquite trees. So how do you kill them? Once you do, like, are you killing mesquite the whole den at a time? Though. Just pick them up and kill them. Like with snake catchers, Andy. Either way, <laughs> or shoot them. Like last year, Jamie and I one day we just drove around the dens and every snake we shot was everything laying that was laying out. out. Yeah, we just take a shotgun. So shoot here's them. my question: Why not just set the whole den on fire? How do you set my, rocks on fire? My my my, my, gra- my great granddad they were gassing a flame flamethrower. They were gassing then. They said he was pretty bad about drinking, but they went to a den and they pulled ninety six snakes out of this one den. God and they were damn. sitting there, and it was a bunch of old Moran guys. And they were sitting around waiting. They wanted to catch a hundred, and they said Bertram was sitting on. They said it was a big rock ledge, and he was sitting up on top of it, and the den was underneath him. And they poured no telling how much gasoline back in there. He said, "I'll show you some bitches. I'll get them out." Said he pulled a cigarette out, <laughs> lit his cigarette, and dropped the match, and said, "Blew those three other guys off the side of the deal." <laughs> said there were snake parts and all all sorts of shit flying out there. Oh boy, what's, what's the boy in Spur did that shit? He blew a fucking house up. There was a, a plumber saw underneath. a den under the deal, and he's like, "Fuck!" They pumped a bunch of gas in there, and they waited and waited and waited. He said, "Fuck it, we'll burn them out." Boom! Fucking house Gosh, went up. Damn. Yeah. No. So what's a big snake? Like, what's one where you're like, I don't think these tongs are going to quite, quite do this. It, oh, it's, it, it's crazy what a damn four-foot yeah. snake will yeah. like, look you, like you, in you, the you, wild. You, you, well, you get when a hold you get of him with the... Keep him on the ground. As soon yeah. as you grab him, keep, don't try to pick him up. Uh-huh. Just try to keep Where, him on the Tire him down. No, you know, but, but tire him down? That, fuck no. You can that, pick him up and throw him in the bucket. You can just no, control. he's saying keep yeah, him on the ground. Like if you have a great big snake, the best thing to do is get a hold of him and just kind of keep him on the ground. You grab your hand back of it and then pick him up? Well, because that's what no. that, uh, <laughs> when we had the python cowboy on, he said if you get a big python, just outlast the first 45 second barrage because they're a quick sprint animal. They're not built for longevity. Yeah. Did you see that one he had yesterday? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Motherfucker. We need to get him on again. He's it's, an interesting cat. It's crazy, though, like we were saying, with a four foot snake. When you get a hold of they're, them, they're they're powerful. Strong. They can they can Big take time. you wherever they want to go. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like you, even you, with you, the tongs. You, you reach back into a den. No, I'm not reaching into a den. Not with your hands. With a, sna- uh, a snake. I'm catches. still not doing that either. You have to explain <laughs> things. We got some <laughs> Texas Tech people. No, here, I don't so want to do else. any of that. Like none of this sounds fun. <laughs> no, but you get a hold of one and he'll go to thrashing, or the, or then they'll like a lot of times they'll get themselves wedged. In like a rock crevice, you ain't right. getting him out of there. Just and, because and, he's got and, enough and, leverage, and you can sit there and you can hold him with all your strength and keep him from going further in there. Right, but you're not going to pull him out. 
a lot of out. times if you get a big snake like because I would, m- me and Paul Ivy and Jamie and a guy named Tom Belcher used to hunt together all the time and it's Tom from Holiday. No, he's from Albany. He passed away last year. But if you got a big snake coming and you just say something, then somebody will be right there with you and you get a hold of him first and somebody else will get a hold of him with you and then you kind of get a hold of him. But you you imagine them snakes in South Texas that are six foot tall as wrestling and them fuckers got heads on them like a fucking... They get, oh, I'm telening you. They get meat long, cheeseburger. It's, it's long down in South Texas. We don't get a lot. Like, I've never seen a six-foot rattlesnake. They don't winter. Though. I mean, foot? they don't hibernate. I've seen a five-foot six. We've I, seen I, five. I killed one that was five-foot two inches and had a guy that was wanting to skin one out and make, like, a big plaque right. out of him. And What's it weigh? Uh, I, what, what does it? Probably we, four pounds? Well, yeah, probably. Cause we figured out from selling snakes about every. 25 to 30 snakes, you can they'll start averaging a pound of snake. Whether so you got to catch 25 snakes to get to a pound, a six pound, well, a six a pound foot of snake, snake will weigh 10 pounds. So if you got a 20, pound, yeah. a snake, okay, yeah. okay. So because okay. you catch little ones and big ones, you right. know, it kind of averages out. <clears throat> a six footer is going to weigh about 10 pounds, probably. Uh, it depends if it's a South Texas snake, a lot of them won't because they're skinny. Now, you're you're oh, really? they get real long. What about those big ones that you see down there? They're well, fucking... they do have those, yes. Yeah, I bet, I, bet, I bet one of those fat snakes weighs close yeah. to I stepped, to 10. I stepped on one motherfucker one time. It's about eight and a half foot in my front yard. It was a rattle cobra. I don't know what the fuck that was, but I'm telling you right now, people thought some woman got fucking murdered on our street. <laughs> I was fucking screaming and jumping and running. I hate snakes. There's, there's a guy from Albany, and his whole saying used to be, if it ain't a rattlesnake, it's a fucking cobra. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> Now, your son recently got bit, Bucky. Yeah, last summer. Now, when that happened, did you see it happen or your wife saw My it wife. happen? My wife, yeah. He was just playing with Tonka trucks, and then she saw it fall, right? <clears throat> yeah, so we we shipped my calves that day, and I took my cowboy crew to town to eat lunch, and they went to the house, and she had changed him, put his shorts on, because it was hot. It was 100 degrees at lunch right. that day, and she put his sandals and his shorts on him, and they, him and my mom were on the back porch playing while she was making their lunch. And Lacey went out there, and he had, he had like a just a Tonka dump truck, and he was running it inside the house, and he run in the house, and that snake come out of it. It was underneath the bed. Mm-hmm. And Lacey hollered at him, told him there's a snake, and he just turned and looked at her like, what? And she reached and grabbed him. When she grabbed him, it bit him right on the end of the big toe. So he, how long had he been playing with that truck with that snake in it? Five minutes. Really? And that snake was just He was just up under just there, chill. and he finally, when he went to running that truck in the house. It popped him yeah, out? popped him out. Fuck. But it's a good thing she picked him up because it would probably bit him on the thigh. And that yeah, it could be a whole lot worse. Been she, way, way worse. She grabbed him and the snake struck and she thought, and he never batted an eye, nothing. Really? Nope. So they but, went inside and she goes, did the snake bite you? And he goes, no. And then she got to looking. She peeled his sandal off and there was wetness all over it. Right. So she grabbed his foot and there was blood coming out the end of his toe. How, now, how much blood? Was it just like a little pinprick? No. He got one fang in him. He did? Yeah. And it still was poison, though, right? Oh yeah. Because a lot of times they got to have two in there to get it where it's a dry bite. No. Is that a, that's a misconception? Then. Misconception. They say that little snakes are more venomous. Right. They're not. They just don't know how to control their venom. Okay, their that's dosage. what it is. They give it all at one time. Right. A lot of times, a big snake, if you don't have him pissed off, if he just reaction bites you, a lot mm-hmm. of times it's a dry bite. Right. Because it takes so long for a snake to recover after he yeah. releases that venom. Right. So like I had. His dad, Ed Compton, George Harvick, a couple other guys called me that day, and they're like, where was the snake at? I was like, he's dead. And they're like, okay. Because the snake won't go very far after he lets right, go. Right, because he's got to recover. Yeah, exactly. So, <clears throat> but he had 19 vials of antivenom of one thing. How much was the, how much was the antivenom? At Cook's, or no, at Hendrix, it was 32000 a piece. Wow, half Jeez. a million dollars in antivenom. One, $1. 1.2 million after we got done. <laughs> Do you know what's sad about that whole thing is? If it wasn't an insurance case, twenty five thousand, fifty thousand dollars probably. Yeah. Time they but they overcharge the shit yep. out of it because the insurance companies. The venom was a lot cheaper at Cooks because they keep it on hand in Abilene. Right. They had to go. Did you drive to Abilene? So they put him in the ambulance. We were sitting at the ice house in Albany eating lunch, and J T Bowman, less his nephew, goes, "Hey, don't you live in Winchester?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, "They just paid a three year old for a rattlesnake bite." the fuck they That's said me. they said bucky nearly turned the table so over. i fucking leave there and i come up the steps out of the back and there's a guy coming around the corner to go to the bathroom and i just run right they said i laramie hall was in there and he said i he goes you run over him and stepped on him as you went over the top <laughs> of him and i slung that door open jumped in my pickup 
got to the house, Bud Larry, another cowboy, and Robert that works for me, they were in the crack of my ass, apparently, because when I got to the front door, they were coming around the side of the house mm -hmm. and uh, held up. The ambulance people, I love them, mm -hmm. right? They argued with my wife about it being a dry bite. And I said, listen, we're talking about a three-year-old kid, not a 30-year-old man. Right. Let's not take any chances. Said, take my son to the hospital, please. Yeah. He goes, well, you're going to have to pay for it. And I said, good. Well, fuck, no wonder that's what I called your ass for. I didn't know they were bill collectors anyway. I was, <laughs> right. I was not doing it. Yeah, I would, I would be the same way. Thank God Les Bowman was there. JT's dad was there. Garrett and the city cop. He's a nice man. Because I was... Pretty upset. Why Let's would, you, fuck, why would you? Why would you try to pick a fight on I, at, at a time they, like I mean, that? It's three year old It's lunch time. They want to go somewhere. They were arguing about wanting to take him to the hospital. The fuck's that matter? Let's go check it out and make sure. Yeah. So, I go to the backyard. Lacey said he's under the dog bed. He went under the dog bed on the back porch. So I just picked that dog bed up and he's there and I kick him. Had a golf club in my hand. I hit him with that golf club and I missed and I got pissed. So I just reached and grabbed him. I just mashed him against the side of the house, and I just raked his fucking head all down the side of the house. Jesus. You're lucky you didn't get bit. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would have now. <laughs> At the time, you did. <clears throat> but the best part was Lacey and them get in the ambulance, and they go to Abilene. Well, Jamie's in Abilene at the Coors Finals roping mm -hmm. with his son, Jack. Well, Bud Lowry calls Jamie and goes, hey, I know you're in Abilene. Miles just got bit by a rattlesnake, and Jamie freaks out. So... He leaves Jack there with everybody, and they're like, "We got Jack. You go." Lacey said they get they pull up to Hendrix. The ambulance ain't stopped moving. The doors are shaking. <laughs> she said, "By this time, the doors open." And she goes, "It's fucking Jamie <laughs> now." He's trying to get in. <laughs> said he grabbed Miles, and he said he just turned and went to the fucking hospital. With him. <laughs> so how long were you there when they confirmed it was a, not a dry bite? She was already swollen by the time we got there. So they so that it they was knew it then. yeah. Jamie's but, tearing the fucking doors yeah. down. I got this. That's a tough deal, boy. And you know. We wanted, like, I was probably 30 minutes behind them. By the mm -hmm. time I, I had to wait on the guy who works for me, his wife, to come stay with Marty because Marty was shit, six weeks old, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Right. Maybe two months, maybe. So she got there. I left. When I get there, and Lacey and the doctor are arguing because <laughs> she was like, we want to be transferred to Cook's. And he's like, no, you don't need to be transferred. She's like, I didn't ask to, if I wanted needed to be. I just we would like to go to a children's hospital, right, to make this process easier. And he was like, Well, you know, she goes, Listen, I'm employed by Hendrix. I have been for six years now. It's nothing against y'all. We just want to go to Cooks, right? And we have a family history with Cooks. Andy Cook was my great aunt, right? So <clears throat> we're sitting there, and finally, he, they start marking him on his foot. You know, see the we're swelling. swelling, right? Well, then he starts turning black up and is growing. Well, that doctor comes in. I go, hey, what's this about? And he's like, he gets big eyed. You're now. going to Cook's. We're going to Cook's now. 15 minutes later, we're on a fucking helicopter. Right. And they're ar they were arguing yeah. with you earlier. That's the part that pisses me off. It's all about the money. I know it is. They don't want to lose a good customer. Because Hendrix would have got all that money well, for yeah. all the antivenom. And they're in like, I think the antivenom was like 26000 at Cook's mm -hmm. versus the thirty two at Hendrix because... They had to go to the south side to get something to mix it to where it cooks. It's which it cooks. They don't see a lot of rattlesnake bites. Right. They see a lot of copperhead bites and right. water moccasin bites. Yeah. I want to change this real quick. Yeah. And not because I'm in. I'm not trying to be rude, but Danny Cooks, you said, is your great aunt. Annie. Annie Cooks. Yep. The Stasny Cook Ranch. Mm hmm. That's that's her ranch. Yeah. And that was your great aunt. Yep. So and her, all that oil money from that ranch goes to that hospital, right? Yep. Not all of it, but a lot of all it. All a big portion of it. Yeah. So Damn, boy, you're sitting in high cotton around here. <laughs> so my <laughs> great granddad and Annie were brother and sister. Okay. That's because I always knew there was a Stasny Cook ranch there. Yeah. But well, I did she not... married W. I. Cook. Okay. So yeah. she was not that, that was was that that was or was Matilda her mother? Matilda now. No, it's her. Yeah. Well, no, Matilda would have been sis sister. There was Puss, dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Puss. Hold on. There was a woman yeah. named Puss. Puss, dude, and Matilda. And I want to say that all of them are sisters. Shit, I'm terrible. But, but so the Stasny Cook Ranch Stasny's was the Cook Ranch. Bought the Stasny, it. Yeah. Dr. Stasny bought that ranch. Yeah. So, but it was the Cook Ranch. Yeah. yeah. And that's next to y'all, right? Yeah, just to the south of That's us. what I was thinking. My great granddad, it. when he split with 
from his sister. He bought what was called Monroe Kettle Company, which is on Full Creek, and then they bought they bought then they named it the Nell, the Nine Nell Ranch. Okay, but when because I went to the Stasny Cook back when they had the all the the baseball all the celebrities yeah. come there for yeah. the right the deer, deer contest, deer and right. I went to that, and we went and had dinner at. The Stasny, because John, yeah. Johnny yeah. ran the place. Yeah, yeah. On it. The but, old that, ranch but I was at the old Stasny Ranch yeah. House, yeah. right? That's okay. the headqu- their headquarters and my headquarters are less than, less a, mile. than a mile apart, right. just over the hill across right. the creek. But that was y'all's all family ranch at that, one time. That was the third ranch they acquired in the county. But didn't okay. they carve that off for her because that was they wanted the better cattle country? Yeah, and, and they that carved and that off. They kind of. They kind of argued about some stuff, and then so they split, did their deal. Within a year of them splitting is when she discovered the Cook Oil Field. Why did she – I don't know what the percentage is. I'm not going to ask you, but what made her give that oil money to they that children's have kids. hospital? So she couldn't have kids, yep. so and she wanted to give to kids. All my family – I say all my family. There was a bunch of people adopted in our family, like my brother and sister adopted. They all came from the Gladney Knee Center in the Gladney Home in Fort Worth. Which had ties to Fort Worth Children's Home. So they couldn't have kids. So when she passed away in her will, W.I. Cook got to keep X amount of the mineral royalties. And then the the sale of the ranch and the rest of those royalties went to the Fort Worth Children's Home to build Cook's Children's Hospital. That That's an amazing person right there. Crazy. Yeah. That's, that's what pisses me off about these woke people that always want to chastise, chastise rich people. Yep. If it wasn't for rich people... There, there wouldn't is, be a lot no, of what rich, we have. We're going to say rich white people, too, because I'm going to go right. throw it out there. If it wasn't for rich white people, there wouldn't be universities and there wouldn't be hospitals. Right, I hate sure. to tell everybody that, but that's just the way it is. When you show me a Black Lives Matter hospital, I'll be. I'll say, oh, um, excuse me, I'm back. I know there's been a lot of good black people that have given a lot of stuff away, too. I'm just talking about that's. Little sign, sign. There's a bunch of pictures and stuff of her in the hospital. That's a little sign that's outside, and we took Miles and had his little oh, that's pretty picture cool. taken with her. But people do, they always chastise that. And people yeah. like her gave so other people could have great things. Hill Reese was at Cook yeah. Hospital just yeah. Bucky texted I texted me. Andy. Yeah, a couple months ago. I didn't know he was going to get the. Uh, tell you what, do they take old people? Because I'm not going to use the family plan one day. It's, has anybody else in your family been to the Cook's Children Hospital? Yeah, my sister had surgery there when she was little. She had tumor in her ear and then uh we've had a cousins had a, a child that stayed there a while but well, i mean we've had multiple multiple friends i hope i hope anybody listen this never ever has to go there uh, it's a horrible place to go it's but it's a great place to go damn, yes i don't damn, even, i not, hate it like well we were in the, we were in icu for two two days and i remember going to use the bathroom one night and we had to go down the hall and i just happened to look over the room and i'll Told myself from right then I'll never look in another room as right. long as I live. Bald yeah. headed kid? No. I mean, he was, yes, he was bald headed, but. Yeah, it's just horrible. We, uh, when we were walking out with Reese, um, <clears throat> you know, we were telling him how lucky he was. And, you know, the eight year old, he's like, how the fuck am I lucky? Like, they poked right. me and I took a mm-hmm. helicopter ride. And um, we were just like, yeah, I think you sent me that one. Mm. Um, we were just like, you know, we're, we're getting to leave here. Yeah. And he's like, well, yeah, of course we're getting to leave here. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, there's a lot of kids that yeah. come here. That never this leave. Is never it. This is it. And this is, they're, they're, there's a lot of families that come here, and their life has changed forever. And when we were walking out, there was a couple, probably about our age, and a husband and wife, and they were just crying. They were both on the phone. I was like, yeah, they it's got a, news. It's or, a final or, destination Or the, or the for kid some passed away for or sure. something. Something happened to those two people, and yep. lives will was, never be the same. Yeah. And, you know, and like there's, there's kids that show up for an appointment there. <clears throat> they get right. put in the hospital yeah. that never leave. Yeah, yep. didn't even know yeah. anything was really that exactly. wrong. It's a bad, bad place. What all did they place. have to do to them? I mean, just the antivenom and that corrected itself? Yeah, so they just they they started him on the antivenom. And then ICU was the only reason they stayed in ICU is just to monitor the swelling mm-hmm. up while it was trying to travel. Until the antivenom. What did they say about the spot that was at the top of his groin? They called it lymphatic swelling. Uh huh. And it's just that infection moved to to a fatty part and then started just swelling and bruising right there. Did any of his tissue like start to disintegrate or anything, or did they catch it early enough? I really thought his toe was going to either fall off or bust because it got bigger than my big toe. Hell, damn. you can ask Wade. You can't even tell he got bit by a kid. That little rascal, he's nine over right now. And kids are just. They're resilient. Oh, man, huge. Because, like, he's got, I mean, the size of, I would say, 
like a sprinkle that you put on a cookie mm-hmm. on the end of his toe. Which all you can we're see. We're still a little bit scabby, but that's it. Yeah, kids are amazing deal. Yep. Well, I'm going to tell you what, the hero of this deal is your aunt, or great aunt. Yeah, what a Annie yeah. Cook, what a wonderful story. She got nurses that work three days like Kyle's wife, you know, <laughs> Stormy right. Wojciechowski. She puts in three hours, a w- three days a week. 12, and she's just wore she puts out. three twelves and, in a row, and she's a little tired. Yeah, how long, the, your your varmint hunting trips, they're fucking, what, they're mm. 24 hours, aren't they? Yeah, most of but them. But all weekend? Well, yeah, I mean, you're <laughs> kind of kind of down for the count. Yeah, Stormy, Sunday. you don't hear these guys whining but about how, stuff. Yeah. How long does it take to recover from like an all week varmint hunt? No, if you all stay, weekend, if, I mean. if you stay up, you know, most of them start noon on Saturday, and you've got to be in your at, at the appointed destination, eleven o'clock, twelve on Sunday. But you stay up all night. I mean, it's shoot, no it's, hat. It, it's it's a day and a half. It, but oh. like that's the crazy thing. Like, are, you, are, you, are you fucked yeah, on Monday? No, like no, just no. Cat, cross yeah. Monday off your calendar. I mean, I I can I can get around, but. Yeah, I mean, you want to go take a nap Monday afternoon for sure. Yeah, but all that horn around you've been doing. Oh, Jim, <laughs> I can I can remember. So Coach Hutch, Coach Mac, and then they all. Oh, and Clay Reed. They yeah. all Clay Reed got them into the varmint hunting, and I can remember Monday morning after doing all these varmint hunts, and they, they were, Coach Hutch never wore glass. He always put in contacts, but on Monday morning after, you could tell he'd been varmint hunting because he looked like hammered dog shit, hair's a little fucked up. Coach Hutch. <laughs> Like he's all about appearances. Hair's oh, got yeah. the no. The, he's he's put together for Jimmy sure. Johnson quaff and like you know your butt. You're 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 very. Uh, you was the best dressed coach at school. You're very organized and like Monday morning, his hair's a little fucking cockeyed and he's got these glasses on. I'm like, you you varmint hunting. It's, it's, I'll bet Mitch wasn't no different though. I don't know. Mitch just looked <laughs> fucking rough as shit. You can't tell because he's pounding Red Bull at fucking uh, you know from seven in the morning till I used to just nine start drinking night. beer and then. About six or seven that evening, probably usually about six, I'd just go in there and go to bed. You play a lot of golf. I used to play with Mitch and Wayne a bunch. I mean, I played a bunch with them. Mitch is the only person I know that could drink three Red Bulls, six Cokes, and a four coffee. or five coffees, and smoke two packs of Marble Reds and not playing all. golf. I mean, it'd <laughs> also be just, just, yeah, and being tired and taking I a nap. You. Yeah. You're just like crazy. Can I get that? Did y'all see this picture of this guy? He was moving his uh, tree stand in Georgia. Oh shit! And a pack of wild dogs came oh, out. Yes, I did see yes, that. Yeah. Did see that. And, and ate he, he, his ass. He's picked lucky up a he's stick. alive. He picked up a stick big enough and fought him away. He's very lucky to be alive. But mm. how many? So like coyotes, how many do you think it would take to to bring you down? The same as a dog. They're not real big. I don't know. I, six. I, but I, what am what am I saying? A six. Six. Le, six cows take a grown le, man down. You le, think? Le, I think more. Le, I think less than six could take a grown man down if they're right. Le, two dogs. Last weekend, I I hunted a little contest by myself and it was just a 12 hour deal but Gosh, one of those last stands right before dark I'm sitting there calling it's about seven or eight minutes into the stand i'm looking around nothing here comes one off the side of the hill and then there's two then three then four then five right. then six at what point are six, they turning on me six of them in a row i mean like cattle coming off the side of the hill and i was like where's my backup i <laughs> <laughs> made you kill I shot two uh, two shot of the two six. six, but the first one came in, knocked, rolled the call, knocked the call over, and took off running. I shot him, and then the rest of them hauled ass, stopped out there about 300 yards, and I shot another one and knocked his front leg off while I'm trying to kill him, mm-hmm. looking at him through the scope, and I hear the like plastic on the call roll again. Another one. And I look up, and there's another one that, and I missed him. Right, of course, he is hauling ass, leaving out. But before we get off here, one question: you Gotta be honest, okay? Well, I'll be honest with you, Jeff. Big okay, fun. whatever I ask you, you're gonna be honest about it. Right. Well, I, <laughs> well, it's not gonna be a tough question. Have you ever been scared in the dark when you're out there by yourself? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared of the yes. dark. Yes, yeah, I have Val. been too. I'm not gonna lie. No, I don't no. know what it was, but I was scared of it. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> I'm not so saying it. But you dark. had a moment out there you where you, right. yeah, that's right, yeah. Even I mean, turkey hunting, like walking in, turkey hunting is what gets me because you're kind of being quiet, so you can hear more. The 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 I mean, I've been startled before, like turkey hunting. Armadillos for instance, get me. For instance, you know, walking, especially along the river country, you're walking in there in the dark. You don't want to. You get close to the roost. Right. No lights. No lights. Trying to put decoys out. You know, and like you'll have a hog that's within ten yards. It of ain't you the and, hog that gets me. It's the. It, had the snake crawling over your leg. Oh, <laughs> fuck that. I'm fine no. with snakes as long as I can see them. 
Mm. But like when they like we were snake hunting, startle you? Yeah, we were snake hunting one time, and Jamie and them were standing up the den, and I was actually standing at the can waiting, you know, to grab snakes with them. And I just looked down, there's a snake crawling beside me, going Oof. back to the den. Nope. Fuck that. Nope. 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 What? Nope. What nope. if? What would you do if you mill it out in the middle of nowhere by yourself, and you up there, and there was a man at the tree said something to you? Uh-huh. It might be whatever <laughs> weapon I had in my hand. I might be yeah. saying, yeah. What, "What are you doing here?" We yeah. better hope we're on public land or his land. Because yeah. If he's on mine, then somebody's probably going to get shot. I, I I knew a guy that shot a guy a couple of years ago. He was um, went to his deer stand, and there was a guy fucking sitting under a tree next to his deal. He sat there for a minute, and thought, hmm, "How the fuck am I going to handle this guy sitting there?" Fucking turkey come up, and he took his old gun and went, "Boom!" Shot the guy right in the fucking leg. <laughs> what? Oh no no shit. Guess. Shot him in the leg. Shot the guy in the leg on purpose. Got what? Him. Oh, oh, motherfucker, you shot me. Shot me. Oh, well, well, I didn't even know you was over there. I missed was the turkey. private? Yeah, it was a fucking guy was trespassing. What was he doing? Hunting? Yeah. No He got shit. shot in the fucking leg. Shot him right in the fucking leg. Oh, Pepper. Yeah. That's pretty good. I don't know. Did it on purpose. Jesus. The dude went right past the turkey and pow. Shot shot right. But shot, didn't y'all. want to kill him, just scare him a little bit. Yeah, but you <laughs> could. You knock could his hit. leg off. Well, that. Yeah, that could fucking, potentially kill him. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's arteries and shit in the leg. Like, no, that's that. That's yeah, no I, think I bet that son of a bitch don't go trespassing anymore. I bet he don't. Or fall asleep when he's doing it. Damn. He got a little too comfortable. <laughs> I knew uh, another guy in South Texas one time had a guy fence put his uh, deal on the fence, so he put a mannequin in in the blind next to him, and he shot the fucking mannequin while the guy was in his blind, like fifty yards away from him. So it looked like he shot somebody and stuff. That fucker picked his man, his shit up and left, and they never ever seen him again on the fence hunting. Mm. I'm always mm. like, whenever I'm in these woods, I'm like, what if I find a million dollars? What am I gonna do? Well, well and that'd that, be easy. That, that's a, like on the Newell out there west of Albany. There's lots of old right wives' tales that yeah. like they robbed the trains yeah. and, and the big hill north of the headquarters yeah. that they buried it up. And you know, we've thought about that. You know, you're out. Yeah, looking for deer sheds or turkey hunting or coat hunting, stumble upon a pile of gold. That'd what am be, I gonna do? Well, that, that wouldn't be a problem. But let me ask you this: gold what if you come up on a plane, a plane that's crashed, and there's eight million dollars in it, and there's two Mexicans in there, and you know damn well where that money's going back to? Like you, no country for old men. Do you take the money, or I'd do you take, just turn I'd, around and walk I'd, away? I'd take about four and leave the other four. <laughs> so you're gonna leave the cartel thinking you took half their money. Well, Maybe I they'll mean, be half I mean, as nice. Le- legit, serious Maybe they'll question. Be half as nice. are, are you saying that those two guys are dead? Or they're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. Like no, it's no. I'm exactly taking. Like I'm, no I'm taking the eight million. million. You're taking eight million because you know there's a GPS on that plane. What are you gonna do? I think I know what I'd do. What would you do? I think I would take the money. I would take the fucking money, but, but I would dump it out of them bags as, as quick as possible so there ain't no trash. You or have to. No, you I, gotta I, like you gotta break the bundles apart and find out where those trackers are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right? for sure. For sure. No, there's a way of doing but it. You're but you're fucking I, nervous I, I, as shit. I'm, I'm walking with the eight million. <laughs> and you gotta hide eight million dollars. That's hard to do. There's lots gotta, of country over there. We can find I'm not it. talking about digging a hole. I'm talking about you just can't go down to the bank in Albany and say, here's eight million dollars. I can pull out a, I bitch. can pull out a couple hundred a week and live for a long time. <laughs> Long time. No, no, no. You don't even have to. T- you don't put it in the bank. You can't do that. They're going to track it. No, you got to think of the overall picture. That's a tough deal. It'd be a fun problem to have. You know, there'll be signs. My fat ass uh, show up with a Lamborghini or something. There, there's, there's your eight million dollars right there. Hell, hell, Mine's there's, going to Carl Trumbach's house, putting it in his safe. Hell, there's bunkers on the. There's an old rock quarry out there on the Newell, and there's an underground bunker, and it it's really cool to go see. But what was it built for? That old quarry. And I don't know what if when they. they Blasted or something, probably. There's yeah, ways to hide eight million. To, to, I mean, no. I physically, I could hide eight million dollars. The problem is, is being able to use much of it without push putting any kind. Because if that ever happens, and the cartel knows a plane crashes outside of Knox City, <laughs> there's be, somebody in Knox City. Somebody in Knox City, all of a sudden, is you know they're, they're coming they're, for you. You know, because those people ain't gonna let that money go. Hey, That's dude, why I asked a cop one time. I asked a highway patrolman. I said, "What are you gonna do if you find a million dollars out there?" He said, "I ain't doing shit. I'm turning that shit in paperwork." I said, yeah. I said, I think they ought to give y'all 10% of what y'all find yeah. as a bonus. I wouldn't give a shit with that. He goes, I ain't touching none of that shit. He hey, goes, that's you, their money, and I don't want them fucking coming after my but family. But do you really think it would be a good life to find $8 million out there? I think you I think you would worry yourself sick until the end of days, worried about people oh, coming to get it. I would have an indoor barn arena that was heated and cooled, and... I'd have some of the best horses, rope horses in the world. I would rope every day just for the fuck of it. Oh, uh, I would, I would just know that know any day the cartel is going to come knocking on my door. Have they y'all, say, have y'all, where's Jeff and Michelle? Oh, they must be in Maine for the and third that's month me, in a I row. Even, no, that, that's another this. one on Netflix. Have you watched Queen of the South on Netflix? I have seen that. 
That's a good I one. like all the Mexican. We saw one of the Mexican uh, narcos actors. So you say. And cause the guy told me what he fucking did. <laughs> of course he did. We were in yeah. we were in Cosmo and the guy was eating dinner by himself and I was like, that's a guy that's in Which the Mexican one? Netflixes. I can't remember his damn name, but he's in the Mexican oh, Netflixes and he was there. And I said, uh, I go, what's your name? He told me his name. I said, and I can't remember his name now. I go, uh, you live narcos. down here. He goes, he goes, hey, he said, yeah, I bought me a place in Cosmel. I spend the time here. He said, I'm from Chicago. As he said, it's where I'm originally from. Right. Which narcos? He's a Mexican actor. Which narcos? I don't even know which narcos is. He's on a lot of Mexican. Next time I see him, I will stop and I will write his name down and you'll say, oh, that's him. But because anyways, he was eating, he was eating dinner then. You're then, so full of fucking shit. Okay. Then Andy saw. Here's all the narcos people and I don't see that guy. That guy's not on none here. of those pictures yet. He's on one of the, he's on Mexican soap operas. I've seen, or Mexican, uh. Netflix shows. I've seen him on more multiple ones. Hell, that guy's on that damn Queen of the South right here. See that there are a bunch of that them. They guy. all on different things. And it's then Michael Ecker. Then we're in line at DFW getting on our flight to Abilene, and the guy from uh, what's that guy's name, Andy? Uh, he, he was on Drake and Josh. Drake. Uh, <coughs> oh, the, fuck, the, the fat know. guy and the skinny guy. Yeah, the, yeah, the skinny guy. I don't know how the fuck Andy recognized him, but way, way back in the day, way back in the day, he had yeah. tattoos, and Andy pulled it up on Instagram. And says, "Look, it's him, Drake Bell." Same. Yep, he was. Anyways, he was getting on the airplane in the line. He's a uh, squirrely looking fucker. Isn't he like a musician now? I think so. But yeah, he was. He was right in front yeah. of us. Evidently, he lives in Dallas somewhere. I looked at his license. Not creeper, but it's it's a Texas license. Did y'all see the video of the lady in Florida that was walking her dog and the gator came out and fucking took her or went for the dog? She tried to pull the dog back and it got her, took her to the bottom of the lake. And yeah. like the, the, uh, Ollie's, see Ollie's fucked. See there? <laughs> um, a neighbor lady saw it and like she calls in. She's like, they took her. They took her. She's like, what are you talking about, ma'am? Calm down. The, the alligator, Mike, Mike took her. Like this neighborhood, it was like a, it was it like was a known a, alligator. Yeah, it was a neighborhood pet. Like I'll everybody knew Mike the Gator or whatever. And like he took her to the bottom of the lake. I'm trying to get her out. She took like a bird feeder hook and was like just scooping the water, trying to get this lady. That's a good way to go in with her. <laughs> and she's mm. like, it took her to the bottom. She's gone. The, you oh my god, you're gonna be next. She Gosh, was damn. she was walking Bruno her dog and like it, 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 it took her. Like it's a whole big thing, but way yeah. to go, Bruno. It Turns was, out, <clears throat> but Mike like, was what, hungry and what's crazy to me off. is that people in Florida are so naive that they've got this fucking dinosaur living in their backyard, and they're naive enough to be like, ah, we'll give him a name, and he won't eat us. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then as soon as it's on YouTube, like you just she's That's walking like, the dog, like one of our skater. What 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 tournament was that that Cody Gribble grabbed that at or slapped him on the tail? Oh. Fuck, it was either at Hilton. No, it wasn't. It was in Louisiana. It was at, uh, what's the team deal in New Orleans? Is it New Orleans? Is it TPC? Pro, Louisiana I, or TPC? I don't know, but we've got a buddy. Played golf at the look University Cody, of Texas. Look up Cody Gribble Gator. Yeah. Here's this lady. Old fucking Bruno or whatever her name is. But it got this. And then, like, they got to take, uh, they got to take this poor fucking alligator and dispose of it because. Poor alligator ate a lady. Jeff. You should know your surroundings Tony, if you're living in Florida. Tony was in Cos Cancun or Cosmel one time years ago, and there was a bar there that had a, a, a slide, and you could slide out into the water, and it said, watch out for gators. <laughs> and some motherfucker <laughs> fucking gator right into the right gator's mouth. Yeah. Damn. That's an easy meal. No shit. There's the gator up there. Well, get the hell out of the water. Oh. She's right there on the edge of the water. She's what oblivious. Are you? What in the shit? Go you don't see it, but you hear the 911. There it goes. Gets her. Gets her ass. Oh my God. The victim's frantic neighbor can be heard on this just released 911 call. An alligator hunts a woman. How big is it? Big enough, bitch. <laughs> big enough to grab The call was made by This lady watched it all. And like you hear her whenever she whenever the gator takes her to the bottom, she's like, she's gone. Trooper, not not Bruno. Trooper fucking abandoned his owner is what Trooper did. This would be like my mom, but this is my mom doing this. Yes, she's alive. Oh, that'd be a bad thing. And then that's what one. she tried to save oh, her with. Gosh. It's too late. Oh, 
It's horrible for her family. It's horrible. It's horrible. And her friends. Here it comes. I talked to a couple of people. That's about the time that it is. Trot. That's not a huge gator either. Oh, no. You see when they pull fucking. There oh, is. never mind. 11 foot. Poor bastard. He's like, well, fuck, here I go again. He was captured by trapper. Fixture in the community. Authorities are warning. Why would you be right next to the water? People, though? Why would you be stupid. warring that now? It's too late. I mean, I gotta get. I gotta go. I've got a meeting. I gotta go to. Oh, you gotta go somewhere. Yep. But anyway, if you're in Florida, don't walk your dog next to the water. We have. <laughs> How all long do you think we've been on here? We've gone three hours. Three. I was gonna yeah. say two yeah. twenty. No, two thirty. Two fifty. Almost three yeah, hours. We've gone. We've gone three. I gotta hours. get out of here. I gotta go sign some papers. If Jeff hadn't have cut us off, we could have gone. Y'all another, can talk as long as you want to. Could have gone go. another hour. Good seeing on, you guys again. Uh, no, I gotta yes. go. I gotta go pick up Reese. It is almost four. What time are you supposed to pick Reese up? Uh, well, Jesse just got to work at five. So listen, Wade, Bucky, appreciate you guys. It's been a blast. Uh, gotta get out of here. Yeah, you bet. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, right. It's always a good time up here. Fun. Three hours just flew right by. Didn't realize it. So, all right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Go check out our sponsors. Go check out uh, Mossberg, Boss Shot Shells, Dive Bomb Industries, Specific Calls, Gun Dog Outdoors, Shin Gear, Not Just a Waiter Company, Lucky Duck, Looking Glass Podcast, Hunt Proof App, Alf Outdoor Specialties, Bangtail Whiskey, Stanfield Outfitter, Dirty Duck Coffee, Ducks Unlimited, and Double T British Kennels.